This is Game Day exclusive on TalkSport. I'm Faker Rothers. Big match here at Bramall Lane with two teams struggling in the early stages of the season. A chance today to get the first points of the new season on the board. Who have Sean Dyche and Paul Heckingbottom tasked with doing that, though? Let's go through all the lineups. Thanks to Super 6, here's our match commentator, Sam Matterface. Well, Sheffield United and Everton have lost all three of their Premier League games so far this season and both had limits placed upon them in the transfer window that closed yesterday. James McAtee arrived from Sheffield United uh, for Sheffield United yesterday, but wasn't registered in time to play today. He'll be paraded in front of uh, the crowd here at 12.20 today. In all, they make three changes from the side that lost against Manchester City narrowly last weekend. Tom Davis, who they signed from Everton last weekend, isn't involved in the starting lineup today. Um, so let's go through it. Wes Fodderingham is the goalkeeper. Akma Hodzic, Egan and Robinson are now well-established three in defence. The right wing-back is George Baldock. Lasse LaRucci is the left wing-back with Vinny D'Souza and Norwood as the two holders in midfield and Gustavo Harmer behind new signing Cameron Archer and McBurney up top. Archer making his first start in the Premier League for Sheffield United after signing up from Aston Villa for £21 million. After coming off the bench to rescue them against Doncaster, Everton hand a Premier League debut to £25 million signing Beto. He's the only change from the defeat at home to Wolves. They're yet to score a goal. They've had 43 shots in the Premier League without doing so. Cabot lewitt doesn't require surgery on his cheekbone. Um, but was touch and go for this uh, because of the injury that he sustained earlier in the campaign. Dwight McNeil is back from an ankle problem, but he's only on the bench today. Uh, Pickford is the goalkeeper. Patterson, Tarkovsky, Branthwaite and Young, the back four, with Young playing at left-back. In midfield, the holder will be Gay. Then it's Garner, Dukure, Anana and Dan Juma behind Beto in attack. As far as the substitutes are concerned, and confirmation that Dominic Calvert-Lewin isn't on the bench, uh, Adam Davis, the substitute goalkeeper for Sheffield United, trusty Bastion Traore, Luke Thomas, who they've just signed from Leicester City, uh, Jaden Bogle, Aris Slimani, and Will Osula. Tom Davis is here, but not quite up to speed. Uh, two goalkeepers on the bench for Everton. This is significant, because they've only got five outfield players on there as well. They did 19 transactions out in the summer mm. to reduce the wage bill and bring in funds. Alex Awobi, the latest to leave yesterday, they bought five players in. Some of those not available today because of injury. They didn't sign anyone yesterday. So the five outfield players are Dwight McNeil, who's just coming back from an ankle injury. Vitaly Mikolenko hobbled off last week against Wolverhampton, one, uh, sorry, midweek against Doncaster with a groin problem. They've got Ben Godfrey himself, who hasn't really been able to play too much first-team football because of injury, and Yusuf Chimiti, young striker, and Tyler Onyango. Whoa. Difficult times for Sean Dyche if anyone gets injured in the early stages of that game, that's for sure. Those lineups brought to you by Super 6. Simply download the app Super 6, get your entries in before 3 pm today, and you could become a millionaire without spending a penny. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. Uh, right, so Beto starts, Dean. Uh, how crucial is it that he hits the ground running for Everton, especially bearing in mind what Sam has just highlighted there in terms of what's on the bench? Well, he'll come into this super confident because he scored on his debut and made a difference and they won the game so straight away he will have endeared himself to the Everton players um, and he'll already have a little bit of a a sort of connection with a couple of the players but it's actually not been a problem creating the chances for Everton that's I think the big big positive from Sean Dyche's point of view and he's he said as much you know he's questioned his players and and put it to them that they have to take more responsibility to put the ball in the back of the net. Well, they've got a player that has done that in Serie A for Udinese, double figures for the last two seasons. A player that is six foot four, physically imposing, got the pace to, to threaten defences in behind and can obviously finish. So, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. You want to get out there? <laughs> he might need you. <laughs> no, but Sam, Sam is right. It is laid out in front of him for him to be the hero. Yeah. He hasn't got a huge uh, boots to fill. It's a great opportunity, and I think that's how he'll see it. A great opportunity for him to be the hero. And if he does it today in a game as big as this so early on in the season... I'm sure that could really have ramifications for the rest of his season in Everton's as well. Yeah, goals are a problem for, for Everton, but 
on the other, on the flip side for Sheffield United, they have actually scored and, and they've only lost all their three matches by a goal difference. Um, but with Cameron Archer getting his first league start alongside Ollie McBurney, maybe we can see them firing a bit more. Yeah, I think really important that McBurney's back. I thought he made a difference when he came on against Manchester City. He is a physical player. If you get deliveries into the box, then he'll be a real threat. And it's nice to see a sort of big man, little man front two. It feels like it's been years and years since we've seen a genuine front two that can work together. Now, they did in midweek. They didn't get much service, to be honest. And it was the first time that they've played together. They looked a bit out of sorts. Archer looked maybe not quite match sharp. But again, really important minutes. And they looked like they played a bit like the rest of the team, like they had this game in mind. So I think with Harmer in behind them, I actually think that's an exciting front three for the Sheffield United fans to get behind. Yeah, it, it could be exciting times actually for, for, for Sheffield United if things start to start to click a little bit more, but crucial game for both these sides languishing at the bottom of the table after the early stages, no points on the board for either Sheffield United or Everton. We kick off here in just under an hour's time. I was interested actually with, with what you mentioned earlier on Dean when we were talking about Sheffield United and, and big man, small man and, and it feels a little bit football, like vintage clothing. Everything comes back into fashion eventually, and now long ball football's coming back. Well, it does. It, it does go in those cycles because, you know, there will be a trend of that, you know, short passing, this trend of goalkeepers getting involved now in the build-up, taking risks at the back. You, talk, you heard there about teams pressing, and the only way to combat that is to go a bit longer. I absolutely love Sam Allardyce in that. I do. He has just got the biggest <laughs> bee in his bonnet about it. And I love the fact that he will not conform to this new style of playing out. <laughs> I just, I, I, it's brilliant because there is so many ways of playing. And, and Sean Dyche is right. You should play a way that suits the players that you've got. And also when people talk about long ball, when you think of that term, you just think of head down, whack it as long and as Hit far and as you can. <laughs> and it's not. Teams like your team, Faith Luton, they work on it day in, day out. On that diagonal towards a player, the flick on, the movement of the other forward, the midfielder getting up and supporting. It's all worked upon the so-called long ball. It's not just whack it and hope. No, it's crafted and choreographed. And if you watch Luton's playoff final against Coventry, you could see that quite, quite clearly. Yep. I mean, that's something that they majored in over the course of the last few years. And Rob Edwards, who's not that style of coach, actually, came in, inherited a team that did that very, very well, looked at it and said, do you know what? There's not much I can do with this group of players that quickly to turn it round into a style of ticky tack of football if that's how I want to play or play out from the back. So instead, why don't I just try and perfect or try and improve what we've got here and incrementally try and change the way we play rather than just throwing out the baby with the bathwater. This works for us. We've got to maximise and try and get as many points to the board as possible. They did that and look, they ended up in, in the top flight for the first time in, in uh, sort of 30 years. So that ultimately it's it, it's whatever is successful isn't it you've got to use any method you can I think Sam's got a, a point to a degree actually yeah. that sometimes there is a little bit too much passing for passing sake in the middle of the pitch and it can become a little bit boring anyone who's watched a Manchester City game when they're two three nil up and the opposition know they're not going to get back into the game mm. the last 30 minutes of that game can sometimes drift a little bit but at its very best and anyone who went to Brighton against Manchester City at the end of last season, which didn't mean much in, in the grand scheme of things, but actually was just a terrific, high-level, super tactical and technical football match, will tell you that that is beauty itself. It is beautiful football, isn't it? But I almost feel as if the media are to blame for this negative narrative that surrounds long ball football. Don't blame the media, Spain. You all are in the media. Fault. I know, but you know what it's like. We all just get we, we get a bee in our bonnet about something and we all pounce on it straight away. You know, this game is a six pointer, for example, is the it, it, there's always got to be something, hasn't there? I remember when Luton were promoted, everyone was like, Oh god, but they play long ball football, they're really direct, that's it. And that's and then people just don't change their minds then. That's what you are. And so I can understand why Sam Allardyce gets a bit frustrated with 
with that. Yeah, exactly. Especially when you've had success playing a, a certain way and all of a sudden people's minds change and they're now saying that that's a horrible way and an ugly way to play football. I mean, the trend right now is a right back going into midfield and all of a sudden there's six, seven teams all trying to do it in the Premier League. It's sort of gathers pace these trends Sheffield United overlapping centre-backs a few <laughs> yeah, years absolutely, ago absolutely absolutely um, but it is about the players that you've got getting the best out of those players and, and Sam's right there's no point in trying to turn players into something something that they're not and what I love as well is when you go to any stadium now you really have got that mix of the old and the new that still want and still like that physicality that the game used to have a lot more of and the new style that's that's pretty and, and playing through the thirds and, and plenty of other fancy things. It's a real mix within the stadiums of, of what people want to see. And yeah. that's great. That ripple of applause you just heard was the Sheffield United players coming out for their warm-ups. Uh, Everton have been out for the last five or ten minutes or so, knocking the ball around comfortably. Quite intrigued to see uh, the shooting drills for both of these sides bearing in mind that's what we've all been concentrating on haven't we uh, the fact of the lack of goal scoring certainly from an, an Everton uh, point of view by the way depending on what happens uh, in your match that you're watching tonight today throughout the day Jamie O'Hara and Gabby Agbonlahor are going to be taking your calls from 5.30 this evening before anybody else on national radio if you're itching to get your point across TalkSport is the place to be to go and do that first. They're going to be keeping you right up to date with all the goings on at the Amex for that match as well. That was a look ahead to tonight's Premier League action with Now Sports. Don't forget, with Now, you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Brighton against Newcastle live today for £11.99. No contract. Just search Now Sports. Good afternoon. This is game day on TalkSport. I'm Faker Rothers. We're just under half an hour away from kickoff at Bramall Lane for Sheffield United against Everton. Let's get a recap of the lineups. all thanks to Super 6. Here's our match commentator Sam Matterface. Yes, Sheffield United have made three changes from the team that were beaten by Manchester City last week. They did lose in midweek on penalties to Lincoln as well, but made significant changes for that game. Wes Fodderingham made a couple of brilliant saves during that match against Manchester City and is in goal. The three-man defence is Agma Hodzic, Egan and Robinson. The right wing back is Baldock, the left wing back Larucci, D'Souza and Norwood holding in midfield. Gustavo Harmer, who scored on his debut uh, for Sheffield United after his transfer from Coventry, plays behind new boy Cameron Archer and Ollie McBurney in attack. It's one change for Everton, Beto in for Dobbin, so it's Pickford in goal, back four of Patterson, Tarkovsky, Branthwaite and Young. Gay holds in midfield, Garner de Corre, Onana and Danjuma, who switches from his striking role out wide to the left where he's better suited. Beto, the new 6 4 foot four inch striker, leads the line. Those lineups brought to you by Super 6. Simply download the app Super 6, get your entries in before 3 pm today, and you could become a millionaire without spending a penny. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. So, Everton, a rock bottom, no points, no goals after three games, a long season, and a relegation battle potentially beckon if, and a big if, the Toffees don't start scoring goals. One man who knows about scoring goals for Everton in relegation battles is Kevin Campbell, who scored nine goals in eight games in 1999 to make sure they stayed in the division. So here on TalkSport, we asked him, how do you find the back of the net when you're that low down in the table? Hi, this is Kevin Campbell, and this is my guide to scoring goals when you're at the bottom of the table in a struggling team. Number one is chemistry. Right, knocks it on, Campbell's there. It's number four. I think this is something that is so underrated in a team because, you know, when there's no chemistry, it stands out like a sore thumb. Everton have had so many of these where there's no chemistry, don't look like they're going to score. I think for any team that's struggling, they bring a striker in or they've got strikers, you've got to try and get chemistry between the players and that gives you a better chance of scoring goals. Number two is movement. Campbell, can he get to this one? He has done. He scored for Arsenal. For striker... To be able to, one, have the chemistry is great, but then he's got to have the movement to be able to move into the correct position. The defenders are so good, so athletic now, the movement is going to be the key to lose defenders to get into position. Number three is timing. Beautiful ball from Campbell. Can he finish it off? A brilliant goal! And I cannot say this enough. 
it is vital to score goals. You have to get the timing right because I've done it myself. Times where you react too late and it's times where you actually go too early. If you go too early, you're either offside or you're waiting on the ball and the defenders will read it. If you're too late, you're never going to get on the end of it because the ball had already passed you by. They all go one-to-one. You've got the chemistry, you get the right movement, and then you need the right timing to meet that ball in order to score goals. Number four is CTT, which is connection, technique, and target. And Campbell is away here. There's no flag, and he's made no mistake. If you don't get the right connection, if you don't have the right technique, And if you don't hit the target, you're never going to score. For a striker who may be in a struggling side, you may not get a lot of opportunities and you've got to make your mind up of what body part you use because it's not necessarily just your feet or your head. You might have to knee in, you might have to shin it in. Connection, technique, target. If you miss one of them, it's not going to happen. Number five is attitude and mindset. The best thing you can have as a striker in a team, not only struggling, but at the top of the league, you want to be a difference maker. If you're in a struggling side, you might not get a lot of opportunities. So you've got to have the right attitude and mindset to keep getting in those positions. There might be games where you get three, four, five chances. There may be games where you don't get any or maybe one. If you've got the right attitude and you've got the right mindset, you might then be able to lay something on for somebody else to score. So you can have your chemistry run, you can have your movement, you can have your timing, but the ball don't come in because you make the best runs and the ball doesn't come in. You may only get one ball a game. If you get one ball a game, you've got to turn that into something. Whether you score or whether you make an assist or you just cause enough problems that your team could get the upper hand. But it's, it's so much easier playing at the top end of the league because the pressure's off going for titles or going for Europe there's a there's some pressure but the pressure at the bottom is so much more brilliant stuff from Kevin Campbell chemistry movement timing connection technique target attitude and mindset it's easy Dean Ashton isn't it I think it was he made it sound difficult <laughs> and, it, and it is difficult and he's right that all of those things need to be there if you're going to be a top striker you have to get all of those things right most of the time um, but I thought the attitude and mindset is is the absolute key is that you've got to continue to have your own belief because if you're missing chances that belief is dwindling away within the supporters within the playing staff maybe within your manager at times but you have to always believe that the next chance you get you're going to take and you're not going to feel that pressure that's coming on you from all different angles and as a, as a centre forward I've thought about it over the years actually basically it's 90% disappointment so that is whether it's a run that you make that the ball never comes a cross that's over hit a chance that the, pa- the pass that is in just gets away from you it's 90% disappointment but you have to keep doing it you have to keep making the runs you have to keep offering yourself up for the ball you have to keep getting in the box you have to keep following in when somebody has a shot in case the keeper spills it you have to constantly do that for 10% of the joy but that 10% is absolutely worth it there is not a feeling on this planet that is like scoring a goal in front of your supporters Honestly, it's just such a wonderful feeling. I am so privileged to have had that, and I wish I could bring it back every day and experience it. But it's that 10% you're looking for. That's all you're, that's all you're after, because most of the time, you're disappointed, you're frustrated, you're shouting at everybody. And, but you feed off that positivity. You feed off that 10%, don't you? So if, you've not, yeah. if you're starting a season without that, it just takes that one. We, we've talked a lot about Beto, but actually, Everton have to look at other players in the team to contribute to goals. Where are they going to come from? Yeah, I mean, I, you're right. I mean, midfielders should be chipping in with goals. Wingers should certainly be chipping in with close to 10 goals uh, a season if you're a, a top forward player. But, you know, a, a, as a striker, you're obsessed. You crave that 10%. That's what you live for is just that, that 10%. Because, again... 
how people look at you, how people treat you as a centre forward when you score the goals and give those supporters and your teammates those experiences that winning games because of your goals comes with. Again, that's why players struggle, especially strikers struggle when they finish it when they finish the game because you just can't ever replicate it. What you mean this doesn't replicate it for you? Working with me and Sam on a match day, no? <laughs> The well, thing is, I can't put the ball in the net. I can only talk about it. I want to be out there putting it in. I told and Sam, you. Sam and you on the top, jumping into the crowd. Oh, it's brilliant. I told you Sean Dyche might need you. The, the, the bench is light. No, I, I joined in in a session with my kids yesterday. I am useless. Absolutely useless now. 90%. I'm like Mope. Is that why you turn to things like golf, for example, for sort of that competitive edge? So many players do. Yeah, yeah, of course. But you, you just can't. Rep you, you, if you want to try and find it, you'll you never will. It's it's just the it's it's the best feeling you can have as a as a player as a forward. It's it's a joy. So what are they going to be doing behind the scenes, knowing that that's what the players need to get and need to get quickly? What what are they going to be focusing? I mean, you can do as many shooting drills as you like, but if the mindset isn't right. No, and, and, and you said about it earlier, the warm-ups. Most, most players are brilliant in warm-ups. They'll be flashing the ball into the back of the net, hitting top corners, because there's just no pressure. How do you replicate that pressure in, in a training session? Very difficult. It can, you, can only do, you can only repeat, 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 and then it is about mindset. It's about you. No one else can do it for you. It's about you when you get in that position. Do you believe you're going to score? Have you worked on that technique? Are you good enough to be able to do it? Can you handle the pressure when you go through 1v1 and you hear the crowd get off their feet and you can hear that anxiousness within it, within the support? You can feel that as a forward when you go through. You can hear it. Can you compose? Can you calm yourself? And can you put the ball in the net? Yeah, well, the Everton players have been smashing them in in the drills. They just need to do it in, in real time now. No pressure, as they say. Uh, talk sport is the world's biggest radio station as you know because we tell you on a regular basis and it's not just football we focus on of course tonight talk sport brings you exclusive radio commentary of liam smith against chris eubank jr it's the rematch it's live from manchester arena our expert team includes presenters adam cattrall and gareth a davis commentator john rawling and former super bantamweight champion spencer oliver liam smith chris eubank jr the rematch is live and exclusive and free to listen to over on talk sport 2 tonight from 7 and then talks sport from 9 p.m. Sam Matterface, our little superstar commentator, is here, there, everywhere. <laughs> when he finishes, he's then off to the boxing. Um, safe to say he's having quite a different weekend to Alan... Oh, hold on a minute. I don't even know anything about this. Safe to say he's having quite a different weekend to Alan Brazil. Hey. Not sure you could ever describe an Alan Brazil weekend as an easy, an easy weekend. <laughs> <laughs> an easy weekend. He's got a busy Tommy. He's got a busy two weeks coming up, so he is going to take it easy this weekend because his diary said, "Oh dear, it's disgusting over the next couple of weeks." <laughs> uh, so God knows what he's up to. Um, but uh, yeah, what a, a, a big weekend it's going to be, and it's all on Talk Sport. Yeah, it certainly is. By the way, Talk Sport breakfast back on Monday from 6 a.m. Alan Brazil, Ali McCoist, Andy Townsend, and Gabby Agbonlahor waking you up every single weekday. Um, you're going to need a lion tomorrow morning, Sam. That's for sure. I know you've got Sunday session to have to do but you're going to be up late at the boxing how much are you looking forward to this fight well, it's a great fight isn't it I mean look listen going to the great sporting events is what you live for isn't it and watching them and hearing them and being a part of them it's great and tonight you know you've got Eubank Junior saying yesterday that he was caught by a miracle shot he was complacent in the last bout between the two back in January Liam Smith rugged determined tenacious boxer big favourite tonight to, to, to take the crown Chris Eubank Junior can't afford a defeat it's going to be... I mean, it's seismic, really. It's, a, it's, it's huge for both of them. I think Eubank has taken on a new coach in the last few weeks. In fact, he's only had five weeks with Bomac, who worked a lot with Terence Crawford. Is that going to be enough time to do what he needs to do in order to be able to get through tonight's fight? We shall see. It's going to be fascinating, and the whole atmosphere around it is going to be fascinating, and I can't wait to get there. I listened to a, a clip of Chris Eubank Jr. speaking on uh, Weekend Sports Breakfast. They played it out this morning, um, where he said that he's got a nutritionist for the first time. I was like, what? The first time? Yeah, well, l listen, different people do things in different ways, and if you're comfortable getting to your weight the way you you normally do then you don't change it ultimately I think he had to change 
the way he made the weight this time around. So maybe that's the reason. Yeah, fascinating. It's going to be really interesting. And it all kicks off on TalkSport 2 from 7 over on TalkSport from 9. This is game day exclusive on TalkSport. We're here at Bramall Lane for Sheffield United against Everton. 15 minutes until, qu uh, until kickoff. That's next. This is Game Day Exclusive on Talk Sport. I'm Faker Rothers. We're just under, or just around 10 minutes from kickoff at Bramall Lane for Sheffield United against Everton. Former Norwich crew and West Ham striker Dean Ashton and Talk Sports chief football commentator Sam Matterface. Uh, with me, the Everton fans are packing out the lower section of the Bramall Lane end. Both sets of players back in the tunnel for their final preparations before they walk out with kickoff here, live and exclusive on Talk Sport at 12. 30. Uh, we were focusing a little bit more on Everton earlier on, Dino, um, but Sheffield United, they're about to unveil their uh, kind of new signing, uh, James McAtee, back on loan from Manchester City, deal completed uh, last night. He was their player of the season last year, scored nine goals from midfield and a key part of their promotion. A bit unfortunate for them, I would say, that the deal wasn't done earlier and he could feature today. Yes, but I just think they'll be delighted to have him back. He was fantastic for them last season. Him and Tommy Doyle from Manchester City were probably the the key to their promotion. Um, having that creativity, that spark, a wonderful left foot that McAtee's got. Um, and I think he's just a brilliant addition to this side because that's what they're lacking. They're just lacking that bit of quality, that bit of creativity. That's why they brought in Harmer into that position. But to have McAtee as well will only benefit them. Yeah, I, I want to talk about Gus Harmer because obviously Luton played Coventry in the in the playoff final. Uh, Coventry were fantastic all, all season and Gus Harmer was a massive part of that and uh, he's been a really great asset for, for the Blades, I think. Fantastic signing. I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do in the Premier League. He's already got one goal, scored against Nottingham Forest in that 2-1 defeat a couple of weeks ago. What, what do you think he's going to bring to this Blades side? Well, I mean, you can see with the goal that he scored, he's got wonderful technique. It was a brilliant finish. He's capable of that. But he's got so much more as well. He's, he's a brilliant link player between the midfield and the forward line. He takes it on the back foot extremely well. You know, he's, he's well built, so he's strong enough, I think, to cope with the physicality of the Premier League. Um, and I, I have to say, off the ball, he is brilliant. He, him and Jokeres... For, uh, for Coventry would start the press from the front those two players Harmer from a slightly deeper position and he's so good at reading the pass along the back line and putting pressure on so I think that's another great feature that Sheffield United will need especially here when you want to put pressure on teams he's, he's a small nippy player as well I think that's the best way to kind of describe him I was watching him uh, doing his uh, pre-match television interviews and he stood there next to Peter Crouch and Jolien Lescott and he's even smaller than Lindsay Hipgrave on TNT Sports. <laughs> Slightly unfortunate for him <laughs> I think having to stand between those two um, but it, it doesn't matter to him I don't think he's intimidated you know he plays with a, with a physicality and an energy that Coventry will certainly miss and I think Sheffield United will will see the benefit of that and I, I genuinely think he actually has the quality as well at this level to score goals and, and to create goals which is what Sheffield United absolutely will need to stay in the division just watching the plinth be put out on the on the on the field where the players will line up in front of in around eight or nine minutes time and the the Premier League lion was put upside down upside down I didn't realize it was a separate piece it's like a jigsaw puzzle going on down there as uh, some of the mascots uh, come out and there you go you can hear the announcement of James McAtee well known here at Bramall Lane after his exploits last season player of the season he was he was named a very popular uh, player and as Dean Ashton said just then you know he can do something really special as he applauds all four sides uh, of Bramall Lane here unfortunately can't play today but uh, he knows very much what Phil Heckenbottom's side is about well and that's the benefit isn't it from having a player that you've already had before last season is he knows the manager he knows the players the style so I would expect him to be involved in the next game um, and he can just slot straight in obviously he's been on Manchester City's bench so he's fit and ready to go yeah really popular player as he goes over uh, to the Tom Curry stand and applaud the fans there he'll be sitting from the stands watching this game we kick off at 12.30 live and exclusive here on Talk Sport so both these sides really struggling for points 
Zero points on the board. Zero goals for Everton. Are we going to see a cagey start? Now, I don't. whenever we do a, a, a Premier League exclusive commentary, the last thing on earth you ever want to do is turn around and say that this could be a goalless draw. You, you want goals on the board. You don't, want to, you don't want it to be a damp squib, as they say. I mean, in a sun-drenched Bramall Lane, it's not going to be that for sure. But, you know, we need this game to be lively. Is it going to be a cagey start for them or, or lively from the beginning? But that's the question. And, that, and that's the issue is that you feel tense when you're down the bottom of the league. You're not free-flowing. You can feel that pressure that this that this occasion and this game is going to bring for these these two sides so it is who can who can put that aside who can execute the game plan and who can relax enough to then put on a performance and be creative enough to to, to get a goal and I think if there is especially if there's an early goal I can really see this game opening up and just being a, a, a almost a bit of a fist fight you punch we punch um, type of game because they both will want something from this game and, and, and Sam's absolutely spot on uh, when we talked about it earlier two weeks without a Premier League game to have to sit and stew on whatever happens today I think that'll be something that's definitely spoken about in the dressing room and Everton are going to want to get on the score sheet ASAP because their fans not happy with the board there is a banner over on the lower section of the Bramall Lane end as I was mentioning the Everton fans packed there at the moment to hell with Ken Wright and Mashiri too they've made their voice very well known um, you know they kept the board from, from attending games at, at Goodison Park for, for a while they'll be very quick to turn in this game if Everton don't put in a decent showing yes um I mean, look, you only have to look at their bench today to see that he hasn't had a huge amount of help, Sean Dyche. It's a shame that a couple of the, the signings have come into the club injured, which means that he can't use them straight away. But that's got to be put aside. He won't be talking about any of that. He'll have a real focus on his team. And he'll just hope that the chances they've created in the, in the first three games, they can replicate that today. I think Beto's going to score. I just think after scoring midweek, he is going to break Everton's duck today. Yeah, well, the Everton fans are going to be hopeful of that for sure. Sean Dyche was speaking to TNT Sports ahead of kickoff about the situation that they find themselves in. He says, it's not ideal. We're stretched. The business model of the club is changing. We didn't want Alex Awobi to leave, but you have to look at the reality of the situation. And they're in a bleak situation at the moment, Dean. Yes, they are. And I think he's the exact man you want. I, I wouldn't say you go out and get anybody else at the moment. I think he's a, a manager that can handle the pressures that come with the, the team, with the supporters, with what's going on behind the scenes at, at Everton, with losing players. I think he is the one man you'd want at the helm to try and still put in performances that are going to get you results. But he's just crying out for some goals to put alongside two very good home defensive displays. Away from home, they've been pretty abysmal, so it's got to be better today. Referee Andy Madley has taken the Premier League ball from the plinth and led the players out. Captains John Egan and James Tarkovsky lead out their sides. You can hear the noise here at Bramall Lane as we prepare for a very, very early six-pointer, it feels, with both these sides struggling in the early matches a big game for both of them if they want to go into the international break with some real confidence to try and build on the first points of the season up for grabs for both of them it's Sheffield United against Everton it's live and exclusive on Talk Sport sit back and enjoy in the company of Dean Ashton and Sam Matterface thank you Faye good afternoon everyone well, after three weeks of Premier League action, you wonder if Sheffield United and Everton might be better off on the TV quiz show Pointless. The aim of that particular programme is to purposely get the fewest points as possible. The issue is that these two can't seem to help it. Three games into the top flight for both, zero points. Everton haven't even scored a goal and are in danger of joining an unwanted, exceptional group of top flight teams that have gone four games at the beginning of a season without winning or even scoring a goal. 
It's fair to say Sheffield United and Everton have been very good so far at getting all the wrong answers. The answers from Sean Dyche before kickoff won't inspire confidence to the choppy's support. This week has seen them add reinforcements in a bid to avoid ending up in the elimination round as the season goes on. And for the Blades, a number of summer signings have come in to bolster their attack. Gustavo Harmer, Vinny D'Souza and Cameron Archer all look as if they're going to add a little bit more cut thrust to the Sheffield United forward line. Well, what about Everton? They do hand a debut to their new forward Beto, picked up from Udinese at a cost of £25 million, but he's expected to shoulder the goal-scoring burden that Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Neil Mopai have been able to. And now they've lost Alex Iwobi, and it looks like, after listening to what Sean Dyche has had to say, Dean, is that they had to get rid of Iwobi in order to pay for Beto. Yeah, um, and that seems to be a case, actually, with quite a lot of teams, that there has to be an out player before there is an in and clearly a centre forward in Beto was the most important signing and if you have to do that I think then you have to and it's unfortunate for Sean Dyke because he's losing a player um, in Awobi but I actually think Beto is the most important player let's hope he stays fit let's hope we really see the best of him Wes Fodderingham is the goalkeeper for Sheffield United away to our left hand side Jordan Pickford is warming up at the other end both goalkeepers going through their paces the two sets of players get ready on the edge of the centre circle for the start of proceedings Sheffield United in black shorts with red and white striped jerseys shooting from right to left in the first half and Fodderingham in goal the back three of Ahmed Hodzic, Egan and Robinson, Baldock, D'Souza, Norwood and LaRucci and then up front McBurney and Archer supported by Gustavo Harmer. For Everton it's Jordan Pickford in goal, Nathan Patterson is the right back, Tarkovsky, Branthwaite and Young make up the back four. Ducure, Gray, Agay and Anana in midfield with Garnet tucking in on the right hand side, Dan Juma playing as the left winger and Beto who has got 10 plus league goals in each of his last three seasons leading the line wearing the number 14 shirt we're off and underway live on talk sport with the soundtrack of greasy chip butty in the background as Sheffield United look to get their first points on the board so far this season Andy Madley gets us underway the VAR is Simon Hooper over on TalkSport 2 right now Birmingham are taking on Millwall in the Championship later it's Chelsea against Forest but right now the Blades are trying to find their cutting edge and so are Everton Dean Ashton the former England forward is with me you knew how to put the ball in the back of the net and Everton will be hoping to profit from this early set piece that they've got 10 yards in from the right touchline about 20 yards back from the edge of the penalty area yeah and these are the situations where New signing Beto might want to get his head on set plays that Everton work on vigorously. Garner into the centre. It's not a great delivery. It's headed away by the first man who is Ollie Norwood and he prods it towards the middle of the Sheffield United half and then Gay will pick it up just in front of that centre circle and travel down the left-hand side. It's into Dan Juma who plays it to Tarkovsky who's back to goal, tries to flick it down the left channel and before it can uh, reach out towards that far side and find on Amadou Anana it goes out of play over on the far touchline and away for an Everton throw I reckon I'm like every other supporter I cannot stand it when a player who is a professional footballer cannot put the ball in the area for their teammates to uh, to go and attack Danger and hit here. that first man because so Cameron, annoying. Cameron Archer was speeding through there for a second Dean and he almost broke past the Everton defence De Kure gets the ball caught underneath his feet and then swirls it out to the right side Everton who have had a lot of the possession so far come on the attack across from the right from Patterson headed away by Egan and then it comes back out to this near side where Gay has it once again he pokes it wide and Patterson with a chance to cross LaRucci comes out to him but misread the situation the cross from Patterson into the near post and then LaRucci puts it back into his own six yard box and 
He has to be helped out by Egan, who stabs it towards the near side, and it goes out for a throw in level with the edge of the penalty area. Nil-nil. With the way that Everton are playing, obviously, with Patterson and Garner on one side, Young and Dan Juma on the other, they will outnumber Sheffield United's wing-backs. So I think if they can switch play early like they have done so far in this game, that is where the space is for Everton. Another throw-in coming in from this right-hand side. Patterson will take it. The Everton fans away to our left, not happy. They've already unfurled a banner which is protesting against Bill Kenwright and Mashiri. To hell with Kenwright and Mashiri too. In big, white, bold letters on a black background. Away to our left-hand side, setting the tone of discontent amongst the Everton support that have seen 19 players leave this summer. Only five come in and then being forced to sell Alex Iwobi to uh, balance the books. Matt Clark has scored in the game of the championship. Here the ball's being played through the centre. Gustavo Harmer charging through that centre. Doesn't quite get on the end of the ball that was played through to him and uh, Everton close ranks and shut it down. This is Talk Sport. Yeah, they're going to look to that front two as early as possible. Sheffield United in towards McBurney, who will look to back in. And Archer will either be there in front of him to support for the layoff, or he'll be spinning in behind Tarkovsky. And look to outrun him with that pace that he's got, Archer. Sunderland against Southampton is live over on TalkSport 2. Mark Wilson and Mickey Gray. And uh, Sunderland lead that by goal to nil. Jack Clark with the goal very early in the match. In fact, inside one minute which is uh, a bad start for Southampton away from home. Uh, there's Birmingham Mill also ongoing at this time as well. The ball's headed into the box by Ahmed Hodzic at the far post. He prods it across the face of the Everton penalty area and it is cleared away. You're listening to Talk Sport. Sheffield United nil, Everton nil. Uh, there was a bit of a push from Ahmed Hodzic on Anana. And the free kick has been given and Jordan Pickford will take it inside his own penalty area. Pickford who made some great saves already this season but uh, sticks out in my mind that uh, Superman punch which cost his side a penalty away at Aston Villa in which was a chastening performance I think for Everton. It was, yeah, it was, uh, it was unacceptable that performance and I think Sean Dyche even said as much after the game because there's a way to lose a football match and that wasn't it. They completely capitulated defensively against Aston Villa. Well, Everton would have been delighted to score a couple of goals in midweek and Sheffield United will want to take their cue from last week's showing against Manchester City where they look robust and strong. Especially in comparison to the midweek game with Lincoln where a lot of people were telling me it was a, a, just a terrible performance, a terrible event for Sheffield United. Oh, I was here. I had to sit through it. It was turgid, to say the least. Lincoln more than played their part they were the better side ball headed on by De Cure looking for Beto hasn't had much of a sniff so far away by Egan upfield it bounces on halfway for Sheffield United to be in possession just short of the halfway line back it goes towards Robinson and then all the way back to Fodderingham away to our right hand side Fodderingham who uh, was particularly impressive last week against Manchester City clips it high into the air aims it towards McBurney the second ball comes towards uh, Norwood who fires it forward it breaks towards McBurney edge of the penalty area he goes down the outside looks to get the better of the defender good work by Archer, Harmer and McBurney to combine for that attack which eventually sees Sheffield United win the first corner of the game yeah I think we're going to see more of that aren't we Harmer, brilliant, fizzed ball in towards Archer beautiful touch with the outside of his right foot to set up his strike partner McBurney that's not really his strength 1v1 trying to use his tricks to get past Patterson I thought he should have taken the shot early really this is a team that scored 16 goals from corners in the championship last season a short one taken to Baldock then sent to Harmer back to the left and Baldock again who swells his cross into the box it's headed away by Beto Harmer prods it forward with his head down the left channel eventually it's won back by Baldock and he sends it to the centre circle LaRucci plays it left picked up by Baldock open the pitch up with that pass LaRucci into Baldock then on to Cameron Archer back towards the left hand side and it's sprayed from left to right side the cross looks to be aimed in by Egan who stayed up from the back but he couldn't get a proper touch on it and then Norwood sends it down the right corridor looking for Harmer who's first from midfield and it's cleared away by Pickford over on the far touchline well they've each had 
a couple of minutes each haven't they of trying to show that attacking intent it's got to be more of it from both sides I like that front three of Sheffield United though yes, Sheffield United uh, uh, hoping to get their first home win of the season they don't want to lose a third straight home game this is where they'll be expecting to get points there may well be a goal already at St Andrews Dave Rowe is watching for us in the championship yeah Birmingham nil, Millwall 1 5 minutes played it's 2 goals in 2 games for Kevin Nisbet for Millwall free kick just outside the day after Kevin Long's challenge on Tom Bradshaw uh, Nisbet stepped up and John Ruddy got hands to the strike but it still went in the back of the net Birmingham nil, Millwall 1 yeah, Quaz scored a second goal for Sunderland at the Stadium of Light. Great start for them, only eight minutes gone. It's Sunderland 2, Southampton 0. That game's live over on TalkSport 2. If you want to listen to it and download our app, you can flick between the two stations pretty easily. Also available, by the way, the free Virgin Radio app. If you need to chill out after a uh, hard day's work, you might you know, whack on a bit of Virgin Radio chill. Maybe Sean Dyche could do with that a little bit later on after having to deal with all the tensions and financial problems at Everton. Harmer down the right-hand side, picking the ball up and trying to take the ball beyond Branthwaite. Branthwaite with a late challenge, yellow card is incoming for him in the right-wing position. Well, Harmer got clear and was into the right-wing position. Branthwaite went sliding out. He thought he got the ball, but I think the ball may have gone. Well, he totally committed himself. He did get some of the ball, but he got a lot of Gustava Harmer and when you do that right in front of the referee's assistant the referee had no hesitation there and I think when you go in with that straight leg stood showing again the likelihood is you're going to get a yellow card yeah he, he, that, he's never going to get away with that just getting a, a toe end on the ball as you go through the man no exactly it's not going to count I'm afraid this hasn't been uh, something that you can defend in law for a very long time. Ball in from Norwood, right-hand side, towards the back post, a free header, and somehow John Egan steers that straight into the arms of Jordan Pickford, and that goes down as a missed opportunity for Sheffield United. The right-wing cross was pitch perfect to John Egan, who rose unmarked at the far post and headed it straight into the arms of Pickford. Yeah, something they clearly worked on blocking off the Everton defenders to allow Egan to be free at the back post I thought that with, with the way that it was floated across there wasn't really the pace on it to head it could he have just stepped back and maybe then volleyed it instead Egan because he had the time well they did well to get him isolated at the far post so he had the room to bring it down he just decided to prod the ball forward steer it into the arms of Pickford but that's the first chance of the game and they are so dangerous from set pieces Sheffield United nil-nil the score Talk Sport played just over 10 minutes. Talk Sport 2 for championship commentary right now. And Chelsea, Nottingham Forest from 3 o'clock this afternoon. Remember the big fight build up from 7 on Talk Sport 2. Yama picks the ball up, runs down the left hand side, outpaces one defender, and then holds off Tarkovsky. Gets to the byline, low cross into the box, and steered goalwards by Patterson, who intervened so it couldn't reach McBurney. But what purposeful and forceful running by Gustavo Harma. The Brazilian-born Dutchman, signed from Coventry City, where he topped the charts for touches, successful passes, passes into the final third, and you can see his productivity already. Yeah, he started this game really well. Been really sharp in his play. His touch has been good. And actually, he's deceptively quick. And he fancied himself against Tarkovsky out in that wide area, and he beat him easily. And Sheffield United trying to get down the right-hand side. They beat the press that Everton tried to put on them. Hovering and playing it out towards the right side. Baldock trying to combine with Ava Hodzic, who's a good footballer. And it goes out for a throw-in eventually. But they look a little bit more confident than Everton, Sheffield United, in the opening 11 or so minutes here at Bramall Lane on a sun-drenched afternoon in South Yorkshire with these two teams desperate to put some points on the board. Jam Juma gives the ball away to Harmer. He releases Archer through the centre, gets to the edge of the box, tries to get the shot away, but Tarkovsky comes across and covers for Everton, and it was a necessary intervention from James Tarkovsky. The throw-in has been given by Andy Madley to the home team, and uh, Tarkovsky's not happy about it. He thinks he played it off Cameron Archer, but a mistake in midfield by Dan Juma, giving the ball away to Harmer, who threaded a perfect ball for Archer to run onto just took too long Archer he was there to be hit he got himself away from the defender and then he just hesitated and allowed Tarkovsky 
to get back in and make the challenge. He shouldn't have allowed that. Sheffield United on the attack again. Down the left, the ball thrown in by Jack Robinson. It's a torpedo towards the far post. It comes back out to McBurney, who hits it, takes a couple of deflections, and then Patterson will attempt to clear, but that was blocked uh, by Vinny D'Souza. It's bounced into the path of Beto, and Larucci has stopped him from progressing over the halfway line as he charged down the touchline. Larucci came across, nudged it out of play, and it's away for a throw-in just inside Sheffield United territory. Stuart McCall in the technical area, just having a word with a couple of the other members of the coaching staff. And Paul Heckingbottom right on the very edge of it, giving some instructions to his players as Pickford receives quite a dicey pass back from Tarkovsky, has to deal with that, does successfully, and they switch the play to the far side and look to build up with Ashley Young. Young, left-footed, swings the ball round the back towards the edge of the penalty area, looked to try and bend it round Egan, but Egan was alert to the danger, stepped in front of Beto and nudged it out for a throw-in level with the edge of the Sheffield United penalty area. Nil-nil. Well, it hasn't felt cagey. I think both teams have really tried as Beto just lays it off. Yeah, he gets it to Decore and gets it back again. Beto, right-footed shot, takes a deflection and it's now really wide of the left hand upright. But he only had eyes for goal there, Beto. A throw in from the left hand side into Beto, laid it off to Decore, got the return. And then from the edge of the D, took a strike, which took a little nick off the defender. Maybe it came off the outside of the arm of the defender. I was, well, I mean, <laughs> Jack Robertson's come flying out, his arm's out, he's hitting the corner of his elbow. To me, how is that not a penalty? Was it, did it contact made inside the penalty area or just outside? I thought it was We'd have inside, to see a replay see with slide marks. Yeah, OK, well, we'll uh, send the ball into the penalty area. It comes towards the core inside the box. He bounces down the second attempt and he pops it home. The corner came in. There looked to be some sort of foul inside the penalty area, which Sheffield United are complaining about. And as the ball dropped down inside the box, it popped off the goalkeeper and back to Decore, who nudged it home. And Everton think they've got their first goal of the season, but VAR are checking it. Yeah, I think George Bulldog is trying to say there's a hand in there somewhere. But it's just a simple set play. It's to the back post, headed down towards Decore, who's nice and lively. He's on the move, he's waiting for that opportunity. Takes it on the knee. It's a good save from Fodderingham, but it falls beautifully for Decore who just taps in that'll be given that will be given there's no handball there it flicked off the knee the referee has consulted VAR he's pointed to the centre spot Bordock is still pleading Decore has run away celebrating and Everton do indeed have their first goal of the season now have a look initially should they have had a penalty we've seen the replay of it now Robinson's dive out with his arm in the air the answer is it's, it's definitely a penalty if he's in the area. Well, it wasn't given by VAR. The goal was given by VAR, and Everton have the lead. And the goal scored by Abdullahi Decore, who, after a bit of confusion inside the penalty area from Sheffield United, has steered Everton in front. And it's uh, his 100th appearance today for Everton, Abdullahi Decore. And he will be delighted to get on the score sheet. Well, he's going to be crucial because he's the one player that's given the licence to go and link up with the, the forward. Beto today is... I mean, how crucial do set plays always in these big, big games for any side. Heckingbottom will be so disappointed if it's his team that have conceded from just a simple set play that was played to the back post. And where were the defenders who were following Decore? Robinson forward to Norwood who's being harassed by Beto and Decore there was far too much room inside that penalty area for Decore to get one touch at Fodderingham a second one to put past him and uh, Sheffield United there'll be a bit of an inquest going on at half time I think from Paul Heckingbottom well it's amazing isn't it in those moments how everybody can just freeze and they almost watch the play rather than anticipating where that might land even when the goalkeeper saves it there's not one defender there Beto's goal against Doncaster coming off the bench to get the equaliser was their first in 376 minutes in all competitions and it's taken them less than 15 minutes to get on the score sheet this afternoon well, actually 16 minutes uh, Decore scoring after it has been credited as so a good start for Everton and Sean Dyche will be pretty happy 
with the fact that despite the fact that actually Sheffield United looked the more likely they've got in front and now they're counter-attacking it's four on two in Everton's favour and it's been led by Dan Juma who cuts in on his right foot takes a deflection goes behind and away for a corner kick but I think maybe the four other blue shirts that were charging up alongside him might be thinking that he shouldn't have been so selfish because they broke away from the halfway line, had numbers committed forward. They had two on this near side, the right, waiting for a delivery and they can't believe that he went for goal. Not acceptable that from Dan Juma, I'm sorry. When you're 4v2, you just make that extra man count. You play the pass, you don't be greedy. It's a really poor decision from Dan Juma. Like you said, four against two, all the time in the world, just play it across. I would be furious with him. Corner kick on the near side to be taken by Ashley Young. Right footed, delivers a ball deep towards the far post. It's headed away this time by Vinny D'Souza. It breaks to midfield and then goes back to Patterson, who from that centre circle plays it out towards the right hand side. Gay misses it and then Young tries to keep it in and just about succeeds. Sheffield United fans were taunting the assistant on this near side to try and suggest that that went out of play. No was the answer from referee Andy Madley. And the ball's played forward into Beto, who just shimmies to try and take on Norwood. Everton, since the goal, have looked even more likely to go on and score another. And Beto's getting down the left-hand side. Bulldog trying to hold him up, but still, despite getting a tackle in, Beto has retrieved possession. Dukure, left wing position now into Anana. Now here is Young. Young back to Anana once more. He's got Gay to his right and Young further down the left, who's been ignored by the Sheffield United defence. He's crossing to the box. He's headed away by Egan. Comes back in towards Dan Juma and he just locks the ball over the top of the Sheffield United defence, hoping that Beto was going to dart into the space in behind. He didn't, and it goes into the arms of Fodderingham instead. It's 1 0 to Everton. What a difference! A proper centre forward can do for your side. Leading the line, Beto, so far. Occupying defenders, creating space for others because of that movement. Good hold up play, good link play. Given away by Patterson. LaRucci steams forward at rapid speed. He is a speed merchant, goes on the outside, then shoots down the goalkeeper's throat. Again, one of those situations where you get yourself into a promising position, there are options inside him, and instead of hesitating, waiting, stopping it, taking in the surroundings, he's rushed the effort, which Pickford has easily saved. Yeah, I mean, he does the first part really well. He anticipates, he intercepts, he drives forward. And you're right, you've got Cameron Archer just to his right, lay that off, maybe get it back, make another run. Again, you, you, the way he just rushed the shot made it easy for Pickford. Norwood into Archer, back to LaRucci. A good promising start from Sheffield United has been pierced by that Everton goal and Everton have grown into the game as a result of that. They've got a platform now on which to build and Sheffield United need to drag themselves back into this game and they might do that now. Bulldog down the right-hand side. Harmer with an effort into the near post. Great save down low to his left by Pickford who got down smartly. He'd been disappointed to be beaten his near post from the edge of the penalty area but he had to react quickly. Such was the velocity of the shot from Harmer, who with one touch aimed it towards the near post and that was arrowing in. Yeah, brilliant crossfield pass from Norwood that started the move off. Good interplay between Bolduck and Harmer when the ball got cut back to Harmer. And Pickford was then moving to his right. Harmer made sure it was low into that near post area. Pickford had to change direction with his feet and then get that left hand out at the near post for a really good save. Norwood will take the corner over on the far side for Sheffield United. He bends it towards the penalty spot, but it doesn't reach McBurney. It's away by Anana, who rose and read that. Back in by LaRucci. McBurney trying to win it on the edge of the box, and Branthwaite a little bit clumsy with his challenge there, but the referee allows play on. And Young brings the ball forward up to Dukure, and then back out wide again it goes into Gay. And Nana with a bit of space in midfield now to spray a pass forward for James Garner, who's gone beyond the last defender and read the offside trap well. He's played it back to Patterson. Patterson sets a cross into the box, which is a poor delivery, and now a chance to break for Norwood. And Pickford's had to come out of his goal into the right fullback position to get there ahead of Harmer. And then Patterson can't keep it in. So it's been a goal at St Andrews and Talksport's Dave Rowe is there. Well, it's just been just about Sam Birmingham thought it was 2-0 down to Millwall. Millwall scored an outstanding goal through Ryan Leonard with a volley from a corner from the uh, left-hand side. But the referee, I think, has joked, or the linesman has joked, there was some interference with a player in the penalty area, which has blocked the view of John Woodley. So Millwall was celebrating a spectacular second goal. It's been chalked off. Still Birmingham 0, Millwall 1.
Uh, elsewhere, Sunderland lead Southampton by two goals to nil in the Championship. Three games kicking off at 12.30. Uh, Swansea against Bristol. Close proximity between those two, sort of. Uh, Swansea won Bristol City nil is the latest scoreline from South Wales and the Swansea.com uh, stadium the goal scorer in that game uh, Cullen after just 10 minutes Charlie Patino with the assist there um, who uh, has gone there from Arsenal this season and it's 1-0 to Swansea here at Bramall Lane it's 1-0 to Everton and there was an audible groan there as that ball went back from this right hand side to the goalkeeper from Sheffield United and Sheffield United now expected to build with Robinson, who's midway inside his own half when he dabs it back to Egan. Egan, who uh, takes his time, and the crowd getting a little bit frustrated, Dean, about the speed with which the home team are playing. Yeah, you can you can sense that. And when they've lost the ball in midfield, they then look vulnerable, and you can sense that within the crowd. They're just struggling at the moment to find the front two. Here's Harmer, who's very good at finding the front two. Sends it back to his uh, goalkeeper via Egan, and it's clamped forward up towards the halfway line. And Nana is tall, rakey and thin, and heads the ball out of play on this near side. Paul Hagginbottom made nine changes for the League Cup defeat to Lincoln. It, it was, as Dean has already been saying, a tough watch for the Blades fans, but the common view is, is that it wasn't ever going to be their priority, so they're not too fussed about being out of that. But they won't want to start the season with four Premier League defeats in a row. That is for sure what Paul he Heckingbottom will probably hope is, is that the, that game on Tuesday night doesn't check the momentum that was built up in the second half of that game against Manchester City yeah great point and I think that was the standard that they set against Manchester City in terms of effort application you can't drop below that because you're playing a side that aren't as good as Manchester City it has to be the same and they'll just have been rocked a little bit with that goal you can sense that and the crowd as well Got to try and build back up. I think they played quite well in the second half against Nottingham Forest as well on that Friday night. And there has been positives in their performances, but there's no points to show for it so far. And they're behind here at home, 24 minutes gone. You're listening to TalkSport live at Bramall Lane on a sun-dappled afternoon. They tell me it's going to be quite nice next week. Temperatures rising. Dean will be out in his uh, Norfolk Palatial Gardens. <laughs> Absolutely. A few practice swings maybe before going out for a spell of golf to next week I'm sure during the international break we've got uh, live coverage here of all of the England games over the course of the next uh, 10 days two weeks thank her others heading out to uh, Wroclaw is that right yeah and then heading uh, to the game at Wembley oh no it's not Wembley it's a Hamden Park isn't it against uh, Scotland the heritage match the 150th year heritage match between Scotland and England which is also live on Talk Sport looking forward to that Sheffield United nil, Everton won here. Round the grounds from 2.30. A little bit of a lull in the game, Dean, as uh, Everton quite happy to uh, just kill the momentum and disrupt Sheffield United's rhythm. Yeah, I mean, they have been rocked, but also it's normally around this time in the game when both teams have kind of got a grip on each other tactically. Managers may have made a slight tweak because Everton were getting lots of joy down the sides of Sheffield United. The ball is being played around on the edge of the Sheffield United penalty area. Sheffield United just about keeping possession tightly under pressure from Everton, who applied the press, and Harmer had to nudge it out to the near side and find Larucci, who couldn't escape. It's out for a throw in the left fullback position, which Robinson will take. I think they have to make more of George Bulldock on the right hand side. He's the one that's free. Garner has tended to do that defensive work a lot better than Dan Juma on the other side, who keeps creeping towards Beto, which is left. George Baldock with all that room on the right-hand side. Sheffield United haven't exploited that space as of yet. Here is uh, Dukura, the goal scorer, looking for Beto. Comes back towards the near side and then Robinson flings the ball forward looking for Archer. And then Pickford has to chest the ball down, take it into the right fullback position and then scoop it high up into the air. It drops for Robinson. We're going from one end to the other. And at breakneck speed at this moment in time with some long balls rather than quick interchanges. Sheffield United in possession just in front of the halfway line. Liam Smith against Chris Eubank is exclusively live on TalkSport tonight. You might need our app if you want to listen to TalkSport 2 from 7 and all the build-up. Then we're on TalkSport a little bit later on. Ball nudged down the left side. Looking for the run of Archer. Branthwaite comes across. 
and they eventually get it clear Everton to the halfway line long ball up to Beto I think he may have touched that with his hand but he's got hold of it on the halfway line then he's dispossessed by Egan they've turned it over and Harmer in the half space between the midfield and the defence didn't have the confidence to run forward then played it behind McBurney and that breaks down for Sheffield United and Everton get it clear again I th you can just tell you know two new players in that front line alongside McBurney Harmer and Archer all trying just to get to grips with each other it's not quite worked as yet there's been some some good moments but as in there McBurney went to go long and then came short and Harmer played it over the top that just takes time I'm afraid Narucci standing out on this near touch line waiting for a pass doesn't reach him they decide to go centrally and it goes all the way through to the goalkeeper Ritchie, who uh, actually came out of the Liverpool Academy, it's his fifth appearance of the season. He's in the team predominantly because of the issues that they've had at left wing back. One of the reasons they've signed Luke Thomas is to bolster in that area. Ben Osborne played there last week and then limped off with an injury. But he's got something. You like him, you think he's a bit of a speedster, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought he did well coming into a game as such against Manchester City coming up against Carl Walker and Bernardo Silva on that right hand side I thought he did well and then he was probably between him and Norwood the two best players in midweek against Lincoln he was right up to speed he's got that electric pace got that physicality so was Beto and he's won a high ball sent forward by Pickford and the second ball is won by Dan Juma who gets into the penalty a left footed shot and it's uh, well wide of goal from a tight angle from Dan Juma. James Garner not happy again that he didn't hold it up and set it back to the edge of the penalty area. But that was great centre forward play by Beto. Winning the high ball, bringing it down. And then Dan Juma picking up the loose ball on the edge of the box. And that's, that's the thing, the loose ball. He actually didn't get hold of it, Beto. He was fighting his way with Egan. And in the end, it bounced off his thigh. But then the loose pass found Dan Juma, who's supporting alongside Decore. It's so important. Dan Juma, Beto, towards the left. Dan Juma's blocked off as he tries to charge into the left corridor. And Arna can't get there either. And it's spun away out for a thrown over on the far side by Agman Hodzic. You're listening to Sheffield United nil Everton 1 on TalkSport with Super 6. Simply download the app Super 6. Get your entries in before 3pm today and you could be a winner without spending a penny. 18+. plus. Terms and conditions do apply. This is Talk Sport. Here is Garner for Everton, down the right side, looking to get across into the box. Blocked by Robinson, who fought for that and then cleared it out on this near side. Celebrated his 30th birthday yesterday. Jack Robinson, who will know all about Everton from his uh, time as the uh, a trainee with Liverpool. The rivalry, he's a scouser himself, Jack Robinson. They want to do a good job today. Sheffield United will want to find a way back into this game because at this moment in time, they look to have had the wind taken out of their sails. Everton have it on the near side with Patterson. Down the right it goes into the feet of James Garner. Good little turn, pokes it to the edge of the box. De Cure trying to get it onto his left foot, drives it. Took too long to get his shot away. That meant that Egan could come out and block the attempt. It bounces to the far side. Vinny D'Souza wins it. Good physicality by him. Played down the right touchline under pressure from De Cure by Baldock and it's out of play up on the halfway line. They might get out of their own half now. <laughs> yeah, they may. It's been difficult, hasn't it, for, for Sheffield United. I think Everton have done well because of that five-man midfield that Everton do play with. Difficult to find Harmer and the front players because that's where it's congested. Well, I think the fan base is probably more optimistic than you might expect for a club that has no points after three games for Sheffield United. But you can just get the sense now that uh, they're starting to get a little bit concerned. I think because of, the, despite the budgetary issues, they've brought in James McAtee, Cameron Archer, Harmer, Davis, Vinny D'Souza, Benny Traore, who's got a bit of raw speed about him as well, all for a total outlay of around about £64 million. So they, they haven't been miserly in the transfer market they're just not the players that uh, maybe Sheffield United thought that they were going to be operating with they've lost the likes of Sander Berger who was uh, a more established Premier League player he's gone on to, to Burnley but uh, up until this point Sheffield United haven't really created enough chances there's a rawness about some of the players that they've bought in Archer 21 million hasn't really played in the Premier League regularly he played a lot of football in the uh, 
championship 11 in 23 last season he scored six goals in 10 for the England under 21 so they want that to translate to the Premier League here's Vinny D'Souza tight in the corner on the right hand side oh dear and the ball was played forward by Baldock into the path of where he thought Akmahozic was going to dart but he'd given up the ghost and started coming backwards and they just gifted possession back to Everton yeah and that's the frustrating part is that they've done well at times to get towards Everton's penalty area it's just been that combination that hasn't worked as yet and you're right that rawness that these players have got and the, the problem is with spending that money especially on attacking players as well you want to see the benefit of that which we're not as yet I think they're still emotionally dealing with the fact that uh, Iliman Njai who got 15 goals for them in all competitions last season left on the eve of the season to go to his boyhood club in Marseille he was their talisman last campaign Amar Hozic out towards the right picked up uh, by uh, Harmer great ball into McBurney comes back to Archer and he delivers from the edge of the box with a right footed delivery pass Jordan Pickford the Archer delivers the arrow and Sheffield United are on target he goes sliding on his knees the bow and arrow celebration he's off the mark in Sheffield United colours and the Blades find their cutting edge it's 1-1 and it is the front three that all combine Harmer with a delightful delivery in from the right hand side I have to say Ollie McBurney stunning centre forward play back to goal great touch lays it off and he actually he really fizzes it at his strike partner and says go on deal with that and how he does a firm side foot he kept his body nice and still Archer he let the the pace on the ball do the work and it flashed back Jordan Pickford brilliantly combined the front three that was brilliant absolutely superb and Norwood just applauding George Bordock from the right hand side as well for the work that he did in the build up to it and Gustavo Harmer's delivery into that near post McBurney holding it up, popping it back with real velocity to Archer who first time fizzed it into the corner and passed Jordan Pickford and it is 1-1 at Bramall Lane and game on Dean I mean the way he dealt with the pass back from McBurney it was the right idea obviously from McBurney he just put a bit too much on it you would say for it to be perfect but he dealt with it with real class Archer in the way that he controlled that side foot it was a striker's finish and he's now charging forward as Pickford looks to try and clear that transforms the mood the ball flicked on and Beto now chasing it after Pickford did clear down the left touch line Everton have got it on the left edge of the Sheffield United penalty area Beto speeding past one challenge getting into the box speeding past another tries to deliver ball into the centre and it takes a deflection off of the three defenders that were drawn to the near post and goes behind and away for a corner kick but that was uh, another example of Beto being a bit of a handful oh I like him I think he's terrific so far in this game uses his body well shoves the backside into the defender to make sure he can roll him and manipulate the defender when he needs to then protects the ball and he's also got that style almost a bit like Carnu, the way he looks like he's going to cross and then just pulls it back with a shimmy of his body Everton with a delivery towards the far post headed back across the face of goal uh, by the uh, Darcy was that Anana who went round the back post and then was crunched into the uh, advertising holdings behind the goal as he did so he came from a very deep position to try and steer that ball back across the face of goal it's gone out for another corner Anana slowly gingerly getting back to his knees and then to sort of a uh, forward fold position before getting up to full standing and walking back into the 18 yard box for corner kick then to be taken on the right side by Ashley Young he'll deliver this ball deep towards the far post Tarkovsky peels away heads it into the air but he's not going to be able to stop that from going behind and out for a goal kick and that's exactly what's happened and it is indeed a Sheffield United goal kick one apiece on TalkSport elsewhere in the Championship Millwall lead Birmingham by goal to nil and they've had a second disallowed over on TalkSport 2 Sunderland lead Southampton by two goals to nil and Swansea one nil up against Bristol City we'll have all the goals as they go in from up and down the country 
uh, with Adrian Durham from 2.30. There is a game that kicked off in League 2 at half past 12 today as well. Tranmere against Wrexham. That's currently 0-0. You're listening to Talk Sport. Ball up to McBurney. He flicks it on, looking for his strike partner. Runs through to Jordan Pickford. And then it is cleared away by the England goalkeeper. Who will be the happier of the two managers so far? I think they'll both be pleased with certain aspects of the uh, of the game I think they'll both be disappointed with the goals managers always are but I think the simplicity of both of the goals actually is what will be frustrating for, for the managers but it doesn't feel like they've been held back too much both of these teams which I think is important still at the start of the season there hasn't been that tension well, there has uh, been an incident in the crowd with an elderly gentleman having to be uh, given first aid down by the dugout dugout so I'm pleased to report that he seems to be okay and is being wheelchaired down the touchline now and taken away by the St John's ambulance team meanwhile the ball's gone out towards the far side the left and there will be a free kick after a foul Sean Dice looking a little bit disgruntled doesn't he always and down in front of us and Paul Heckingbottom standing just to his right hand side as Sheffield United look to try and build up with Harmer into Robinson then forward by Norwood but his firing ball forward whacked through the middle of the congested midfield he is into no one in particular and is easily dealt with by the Everton defence Tarkovsky away down the right flicked behind him by Garner and then Beto tries to hold on to it spins and takes advantage of a slip by Egan takes it to the right edge of the area just across into the box which flicks into the air might come through to Dan Juma but Vinny D'Souza gets there first and heads it out over on the far side well one thing you can say about Beto is even if he is not perfect he is not going to give you a moment's peace <laughs> no he is a strong boy isn't he he's aggressive with it as well like I said that use of his body at the right moments just to bounce defenders off as he did with Egan here who looks like he may then have just jarred his knee slightly but he's got such long legs as well such long levers that he can hold you off with his arms and stretch those legs out across you very difficult then to try and win the ball as a defender yeah and he can try to in that moment of him stretching his right leg across the body of John Egan which meant that as John Egan tried to challenge for the ball from the side his knee just went out at a funny angle as he planted his foot and uh, he needs treatment as a result of that. You're listening to Sheffield United nil, Everton 1, Talk Sport with Now. Don't forget, with Now you can stream all the Sky Sports action, like Brighton versus Newcastle, live today for 11 99 No contract, search Now Sports. I did find myself actually touching you there as I was trying to sort of describe that action, didn't I? I apologise if I uh, encroached on your personal I didn't, space. I didn't notice. Or put, it, put my leg over, uh, over, your, uh, over your body. Did I say, what did I say? 1-1. One, one. Sheffield United 1, Everton 1. Um, you're listening to Talk Sport. And we're live at uh, Bramall Lane where there is a pause for this uh, interruption. Shall we go off to St Andrews and find out how things are getting on in the Championship while we're getting treatment for John Egan and speak to our reporter there today, Dave Rowe. Yeah, still Birmingham doing Millwall 1. Millwall the better side. Their goal coming from Kevin Nisbet's free kick in the early stages. Second one chalked off. Spectacular strike by Ryan Leonard but it appeared the ball took a slight flick off an offside Jake Cooper and that was what, why that second goal was chalked off. Birmingham had missed a couple of chances uh, having gone behind with uh, Bakuna firing over after good work by Stanfield and Sanderton heading over the crossbar after a free kick by Keshi Anderson 39 played Birmingham 0 Millwall 1 Sheffield United 1 Everton 1 in the championship it's Birmingham 0 Millwall 1 Sunderland 2 Southampton 0 and Swansea 1 Bristol City 0 still 0-0 between Tranmere and Wrexham in League 2 and uh, remember you can uh, go back and listen to all the highlights of Deadline Day on our app by the way I mean, it was a brilliant day yesterday and it was great to be involved in it and if you want to listen back to some of the the good bits that you uh, may have missed, then go on to our TalkSport app. You can flick back through the schedule and listen to some of the shows from yesterday, including that two-hour special with Jim and Alex Crook from last night. When they got David Moyes on the programme midway through the, uh, uh, the, the show, well worth a listen. And uh, there's also uh, the dramatic moment where the Mo Salah bid goes in during the 10 till 1 show. And you can look at some of the video highlights on the video option, which is now on the bottom of the app at the bottom of your screen. We're back underway. Egan is ready to come back on. 
and the ball is inside the Sheffield United half on the left side with LaRucci who sends it long up over the halfway line Tarkovsky brings it down moves in field Gay Tarkovsky and then looks up for Better, who spins towards the right side Akmar Hodzic tries to engage with him like he engaged with Haaland last week and Beto saying come on give me the ball a little bit more I want more from you here there is a little bit of a slowing of the tempo in this game yeah there is every time it goes up towards him though he turns to the defender sees exactly where he is makes it really obvious actually and then tries to back in well done Amahodzic there because he read it let him step and then just jump round his leg and nip just in front of him that's probably what you're going to have to do is try and anticipate and either nip in front or let him have it and just stand off and let your midfielder do it nil nil Everton have possession with Pickford who sent it long right through the middle of the pitch away by uh, Egan and then the second ball is won by Idrissa Garner Gay just to the right of the centre is De Kuro. scored the opening goal the only goal uh, that Everton have managed so far this Premier League season levelled up by that terrific finish from Cameron Archer and it's one apiece at Bramble Lane as a result Anana back to Patterson Patterson in field to Tarkovsky back to Patterson once more a yard in from the right touch line Anana Tarkovsky not really going anywhere with it Sheffield United getting back into shape they have got their back five and then Ollie Norwood screening in front of them so they are difficult to penetrate De Kure, Anana right side back towards the halfway line and Tarkovsky Gay puts the ball out wide to the right and Tarkovsky will get it back from Patterson I mean when it's at that pace though that doesn't tend to hurt you as a defender it's like a great turn gladly turned by Beto who received it in his body played it down the left to Dan Juma who's allowed to run into the penalty area took a heavy touch and ran straight into Fodderingham who came out very smartly and smothered the attempt but I know Dan Juma actually has been guilty of wasting a couple of good chances down that left hand side to get shooting opportunities for his teammates I have to say what a brilliant take and turn from Beto again Egan trying to win it in front he was rolled by Beto who just then played it with the outside of his foot into Dan Juma got to do better again here is Dan Juma over on the left hand side moving towards the edge of the penalty area cuts in on his right foot delivers across towards the far post Anana's trying to keep it in stretching can't do so goes behind I wonder if Mrs Ashton is listening today I think she might be a little bit worried about the and she would have thought all these years only eyes for her and now you seem to be getting very loved up with Beto <laughs> do you know what it's just so refreshing to see a centre forward like that he just wants the physicality the backing in the hold up play the tur you can see why Sam you can see why I can see why she'll okay. understand <laughs> There will be four added minutes at the end of this first half. 1-1 is the score. It's not been the most eventful, but we've had two goals. And to be honest with you, I think both these two teams would have taken just getting on the score sheet. Um, they will want a point from it, at least. They would want to put something on the board tonight. Better again, putting pressure. I mean, that was a nothing ball, really. It was a hopeless course, but he didn't give up the chase. And then as Egan tried to clear, he threw himself in front of it, and he might have got something on it another day. Uh, over on the left, Cameron Archer is making a nuisance of himself, and he's tussling with Tarkovsky. The ball goes out. It might have been a free kick that was given, actually. And then the referee says, just take the throw. It's 50-50. Play on. A bit more of that. Why not? 1-1. We're into the first of four added minutes on Talk Sport on game day, where later on we'll take you around the grounds with Adrian Durham and bring you the fight between Liam Smith and Chris Eubank Jr. tonight from the AO Arena in Manchester. They're on air at seven on Talk Sport 2. And then the big fight on Talk Sport. Patterson runs up towards halfway, over halfway, delivers across towards the edge of the box. Poor delivery. And then there's the second ball comes out to Adrissa Garner Gay. He's fouled by Harmer, and a free kick has been given to Everton. It's one thing that I think Sean Dyche will want more of. When they have that, that space out wide that Sheffield United will allow you to have with the extra player, is that delivery. They had runners going into the box. Onana, Beto, Decore all looking to get 
into the penalty area and then a really disappointing ball from Patterson that's a couple of times now that he just can't get the height on his crosses set pieces are going to be important for the wily old Sean Dyche his 300, uh, 450th league game as a manager today he's full of experience Garner is going to take this one from this uh, near side uh, Ashley Young is staying to his left it might be choreographed it is now Young who delivers the ball towards Brantway at the back post but it wasn't perfect and it's away by McBurney one by Harmer it goes out for a throw and over on the far side it was a bit of a waste of a free kick that I don't think they knew what what they were doing because Garner was almost well I'm taking it and and Ashley Young stepped away and then they even changed the angle to a worse angle from the middle of the pitch yeah it was strange wasn't it because it it almost intimated that Young wanted to take it from a different angle but actually instead of him just telling that uh, to uh, Garner somebody else did here's Archer on the near side played in by Harmer as he runs towards the left channel cuts on his right foot then bends it towards the far corner hits the post comes back off Pickford and it's an own goal Cameron Archer brilliant delivery towards the far post his shot hits the foot of that post comes out hits the back of Pickford and goes in the empty net nothing the goalkeeper could really do about that but Archer has made an impact all right he won't get credited with that goal but it was all about him it was 2-1 it was direct play from Sheffield United Norwood in towards Harmer who had the awareness just to play it over the back of his head towards Archer he faced up Tarkovsky 1v1 he just jinks to his right hand side curls it whips it bends it towards that far post he's so unlucky as it cannons off the post but then this is how goalkeepers have sleepless nights they have nightmares about this situation when it cannons off the post it hits Pickford on the back of the head and flies into the back of the net Jordan Pickford who is uh, out of his penalty area having a word with Tarkovsky saying you've got to get someone to pick up Harmer in those positions he just lofted the ball down the left to pick up Cameron Archer and he charged towards the ball he was full of confidence he cut it on his right foot from around about 19 yards bent it towards the far corner Pickford couldn't get there the post stopped it and then as it rebounded it's such power in the shot really that took it off the post bounced it off Pickford and it went straight to the back of the net it didn't even sort of dribble in did it it was that well hit from our Archer in the first place yeah I think already Sheffield United fans must be thinking yes we have got a player here because the two things that he's done in terms of goal action have been with the highest of quality well even when he was coming off the bench in Aston Villa colours he was always a threat you know you look at some of his League Cup statistics for Aston Villa he scored a lot of goals he, I think he scored a hat-trick in one game a couple of years ago and he has been touted as a goal scorer thought of as a goal scorer he looks like a goal scorer yeah it's all right scoring goals in the championship but you've got to translate it to the top flight Cameron Archer seemingly doing that and they've come from behind to lead at the break the goal from Decore puts Everton in front after a mishap at the back from a corner but Sheffield United have responded actually arguably they started the game brighter got rocked by that goal but then towards the end of that first half came into their own Cameron Archer with the first an own goal for the second means at half time it's 2-1 to Sheffield United it's been an absolute cracking first half here at Bramall Lane entertaining and end-to-end -end stuff over on TalkSport 2 two early goals from Sunderland and a third just before half time sees them lead Southampton 3-0 at half time uh, over in St Andrews let's find out what's going on with Dave Rowe penalty to Birmingham at the end of the first half Scott Hogan steps up right for his save by Sarkic rebound is wide and Birmingham are denied and Sarkic makes the save after conceding the penalty in the first place and Birmingham continue to be frustrated it was a throw ball by Bakuna finding Keshi Anderson he was running away from goal but Sarkic still made the challenge Anderson went down but he's made the save denying Scott Hogan in stoppage time it's still Birmingham nil Millwall one half time in the other EFL championship early kickoff Swansea are a goal up against Bristol City uh, and in league two uh, in Tr uh, Tranmere 
and Wrexham is goalless at the moment. Here at Bramall Lane, nothing cagey about this big game at the bottom of the Premier League. Sheffield United 2, Everton 1 at half-time. We'll look ahead to the second half, live and exclusive here on TalkSport next second half coming up shortly here at Bramall Lane. Uh, interesting Dean Ashton Sean Dyche didn't even celebrate that opening goal for Everton I noticed and they wasted chances again They did um, Dan Juma especially I thought was really wasteful when he had that 4v2 counter attack he has to make the right decision there that's just not acceptable to, to go alone in that moment and then he had another chance when Beto put him through and his touch was poor so They've had their moments, Everton, hit again, he'll probably think, well, how, have we, how has this just ended up 2-1 at half-time? Because it's been very, very even. Big, big slice of fortune, obviously, with the second goal, but he's going to have to, once again, try and, uh, try and lift his players. You make your own luck, though, I would say, and Cameron Archer certainly did that. I mean, it almost sneaked in on the inside of the post. If it had been... Uh, wide it would have bounced out the other way and wouldn't have gone anywhere near Jordan Pickford so you've got to give credit to, to the striker and he's been fantastic Cameron Archer in this game he's just looked like he's got that quality you know the, the touches that he's had the moments that he's had which have been quite few to be fair because they've not been able to get that ball in towards McBurney and Archer very often but the way he took his goal to me shows a player of real quality and of course the, the effort that came back off the post was, was up there as well so exciting, I think, for Sheffield United and Paul Heckingbottom that they've got that front three, just saying to Sam at half-time, that could be in certain games, they're going to have to be better defensively, but in certain games, that front three could be crucial. Yeah, but you said that, didn't you? And it, when it wasn't clicking, when they were a goal behind and, and the little combination plays that we heard in Kevin Campbell's piece earlier on when talking about Everton, actually, we didn't see that kind of combination link-up play with, with the Sheffield United forwards, but... You know, fast forward a good half an hour of the game and they just started working each other out a bit more. Yeah, I mean, look, they will adapt quickly, but it's not just going to happen straight away and you could sense a bit of unrest within the Sheffield United support because of those loose passes, because of the mix-up in communication. But if they get it right, which they did for that first goal, they are going to be dangerous and all three possess good quality. As, as was shown, every part of that needed to be right, and it was. And everything that Cameron Archer was doing well was all down Sheffield United's left-hand side, and they were giving uh, the Everton defence a bit of a torrid time round there. Well, as a forward, you I try and identify the weaker side of a defence, for yourself anyway. I think Archer feels like he's got the beating in behind Patterson and against Tarkovsky. You know, took him 1v1 at one point for the goal, takes it inside Tarkovsky can't turn and he gets his shot away so that's what you have to do as a forward but you have to recognize where the weaknesses are and you don't apologize for that you keep using that space Everton did get their first goal of the Premier League campaign it came from Abdullahi Decore a little bit fortunate perhaps came off I think it was his thigh first and foremost brilliant save from foddering them to deny him but then he got the rebound and it felt as if Everton were actually in control of the game then but again just a little bit wasteful what is Sean Dyche going to be saying to them at half-time? It's very difficult for him because he'll be saying, yes, the positives are we're creating these moments and getting into good areas. But can he... He can't go on the pitch and do it himself. So he's just got to try and give them the confidence again. I don't think hammering the players is going to help at the moment. No, so he'll so be saying, keep getting in those areas, keep trying to make the right decisions and, and it'll turn for us because there's... There was plenty of positivity in the way that Beto played mm. and being able to get in and around him. He is going to cause problems and it'll the ball will fall for the midfielders if they get up there with him. Yeah, he's been all over the pitch, Beto. I'm just looking at his heat map currently and he's been um, absolutely everywhere. Is your love affair with him going to continue? Can you see him on the score sheet this second half? I mean, I called it before the game. I thought he would score and I expect him to. I think he's really taken on that mantle of being the man being the the main player even when he hasn't got it I can see him vocally shouting at the players that he wants it he wants to be involved he's pumped up for the game I think he's had a great attitude in that first half Everton players first out no sign of the Sheffield United squad just yet we'll find out whether there are any changes or not as Everton 
uh, go straight out there. About 30 seconds from uh, kickoff in this second half. So Sheffield United are going to have to hurry up a little bit because Everton <laughs> have beat them to the pace here. Full of intent for this second half. They know they have a big 45 minutes coming up. Second half action here on Talk Sport live and exclusive on game day with Dean Ashton and Sam Matterface. I've got two of them. It's killing me. I can't get the final one, the strikers that scored in the consecutive games. I can't tell you because Adrian's going to do it a little bit later on. But you know like when someone gives you a quiz question like that and you're so close to getting it right and the name won't pop into your head. So frustrating. Almost as frustrating as that first 45 minutes for Sean Dyche, the manager of Everton, having watched his team not only get in front but create chances too. And wastefulness has been the story of their season so far. They've been creating opportunities but not taking them. Their XG before today was 5.21, but they hadn't scored a goal before today, which tells you how many big chances they'd been creating earlier in the uh, season. It is the worst conversion rate in the league. The Toffees have missed more big chances than anyone else in the division. We're about to get underway, and we do. I like the fact that the uh, Sheffield United crowd signal the start of a half or a game as Beto goes running down the left-hand side. Play on, says the referee after a head collision away to our right-hand side. Branthway has gone down. Beto's missed the target by some margin, but they are worried about uh, Branthway away to our right-hand side. And Andy Madley, who wasn't aware of the situation, is now coming over towards his near side to check on the prognosis. But they probably should have stopped that immediately, and Ashley Young is telling him that. Yeah, I think so. That was obvious, you just saw it coming, both players oh, that so good. committed, flying into each other, shoulder to shoulder. And Branthwaite luckily is up, but that was a chance for Beto, wasn't it? He was away, onto his left foot and then really bobbled it wide, it wasn't a, a very good connection at all. And you can see him just shouting at himself, he knew that was a chance. Well, that was an opportunity, and again, we point to the statistics that Everton have missed more big chances than most in the Premier League so far this season, and they trail by two goals to one here. The two 11s, now Branthwaite is back on his feet, following the goalkeeper for Sheffield United, the back three of Agma Hodzic, Egan and Robinson. George Bordock, Vinny D'Souza, Oliver Norwood and Yasser Larucci are the four in midfield, the wing-backs Larucci and Bordock with McBurney and Archer being supported by Harmer in attack. Everton have the ball in midfield. Anana floats it forward down the left, and Mohodzic will deal with that. Everton have got Pickford in goal, Patterson, Tarkovsky, the booked Bramthwaite, and Ashley Young as the back four. Gay is the holder, with Garner, Dukure, Anana, and Dan Juma operating as a four-man midfield behind Beto, who leads the line. And uh, he's been pretty useful so far. He has gone on the Valentine's Day card list for Dean Ashton. <laughs> and uh, Imagine if he scores. Yeah, I know. I'm a bit worried about what, what, what might happen to him. Um, Gay sending the ball out towards the far side. And he hasn't done that yet. And Everton have got one goal. It came from a mistake from a corner from Sheffield United. But they hit back Sheffield United with two goals before half-time. And they lead by two goals to one. Live on Talk Sport this Saturday lunchtime and we'll keep you up to date with what's happening in the championship where there are three games today what should Sean Dyche's approach be in the second half should he change anything what is there a tone or a tempo that they need to increase or change a lovely back heel by Beto into the Danjuma into the penalty area gets dragged down inside the box and the free kick is given outside the penalty area well he thinks it's inside the penalty area and VAR will certainly check this and he is absolutely furious, Dan Juma, because he thinks that that's got to be inside the box. Let's have a look at the replay. Dean, what was your initial thought? I mean, Beto, a brilliant back heel. Dan Juma was away and it, is ju it definitely starts just outside the area. Ahmed Hodzic made sure of that, but he's right into the area then, Dan Juma, I'm, when he's I'm then going to take the, the, the strike. It starts outside the area, but the significant pullback part is inside yeah. the area. Yeah, I mean, he tries to do it as early as possible, doesn't he? Ahmad Hodzic, because he knows that he's the wrong side defensively. Brilliant bit of centre forward play again from Beto. Lovely little cheeky back heel into the path of Dan Juma, who's away, by the way, and he's going to take a strike. 
And the referee is giving a yellow card to Agmar Hodzic and he is insisting that he's outside the penalty area Dean it's subjective so it is because the arm goes over his shoulder while he's outside the area but you're right then that significant pull is inside the area so where do you judge it well from the bit that brought him down I would have thought I can't I actually think that at least he should have gone to the monitor there because that is such a grey line that's so difficult to judge that he must be sent to the monitor there's absolutely no reason why you wouldn't it's not definitive even when you've looked at it back and he would have to go and review that himself to see if he felt the significant contact was on the shoulder I think that's poor free kick on the edge of the penalty area Dan Juma to take it and uh, there is an argument now about the fact that Sheffield United have encroached past the white line that Andy Madley has put down on the floor so he's decided to put another line out down which is further in front of it I think that's for uh, the Everton players because there has to be one metre between the two uh, anyway there's going to be a free kick for Dan Juma on this near side to try and level things up 2-1 the scoreline just left of the D he'll hit this right footed Dan Juma from the Netherlands looking for his second goal in a week for Everton there's a huge delay here as he steps up right footed hits it against the wall hits the, the wall straight on it had no power in it had no precision it goes out for a throw in by the corner flag no and that they'll feel a little bit hard done by Everton because on another day that may well have been a penalty we heard from the PGML hello that they're not going to try and re-referee the game VAR and again that is a subjective decision where they feel they're going to go with the referee's decision on the field I understand that you were part of a briefing yesterday weren't you where you had an opportunity to speak to them I understand they don't want to re-referee games but it was there for clangers it was there for big errors and that looks to me when you watch it back like if he thinks it's outside the area I mean I'd have to see it again to be 100% sure but he should have seen it again to be 100% sure um, here's the corner away to our left hand side sent in towards the six yard box headed away by Egan and then flicked out to the far side and Vinny D'Souza will try and chase it uh, you'll be able to have your say a little bit later on I can tell you that there's no João Pelinha with the Fulham players as they inspected the pitch on arrival at the uh, game at Manchester City today Adrian Durham is there to bring you all around the grounds and the goals as they go in and uh, I'm not surprised by that bearing in mind he flew to Germany expecting to do a medical yesterday no as low as a, a snake's belly in, uh, in Munich airport very very difficult very very difficult for a player like that but when he gets back into that dressing room the players will be pleased to have him still at the football club and I'm sure they'll just take the mickey out of him well I, I tell you this now the, the Fulham supporters will be delighted to have him because he's absolutely terrific um, and he is staying at Fulham at least until January he's a super player and they'll miss him today if he doesn't end up playing against Manchester City we'll get team news in around about 17 minutes here on Talk Sport be interesting to see and what is made of that penalty decision as the ball is played down the right hand side Beto skips past the defender low cross into the near post just about kept it in the Sheffield United fans thought he didn't and the Hodzic turns it behind and away for a corner but again another terrific bit of skill from Beto he's a real handful and Everton have got a player here I mean from our angle over on this side that looked like the ball had gone out but of course right over there was the assistant almost hovering over the top of it well he was closest to it and we were about 70 yards away as the ball goes into the box and the header down by Beto into the six yard box and Tarkovsky can't finish it off Sean Dyche is furious he thought there was some pushing going on on Branthwaite and he was being held back as that ball went into the penalty area uh, certainly Robinson had hold of his hand and his shirt in fact he pulled his shirt up towards his shoulders and wouldn't let him escape I mean I, I'm trying to understand first of all what Robinson's doing the only thing is Branthwaite actually with the angle that we've just seen on the monitor in front of us Branthwaite then helps the shirt over himself well it's interesting isn't it there's a lot of bare skin there 
that was maybe unnecessary and Branthwaite helped it which was very odd anyway the ball is uh, must have uh, must have enjoyed the, the holiday under the under the umbrella Branthwaite yeah he looks a little bit pale doesn't he he looks like he needs some vitamin D the fella uh, here is uh, Gay touching it forward into uh, Dekure who skips past one challenge from Harmer and it goes out wide towards the far side the flick on it by Garner who speeds away from one challenge feeds Beto it goes further wide to Patterson into the box Dan Juma is there and an equaliser is tapped in in front of the Everton fans away to our left hand side it was a brilliant Everton move Beto involved Patterson with a cross Dan Juma finishes off this chance and Everton who hadn't scored a goal before today have two in the Premier League away at Bramall Lane it's 2-2 yeah this is a terrific goal from Everton and I talked about that delivery from the right hand side and Patterson in particular well I tell you what he gets this one absolutely spot on he plays that ball round the corner towards Garner who gets a little bit fortunate when it gets away Beto out towards Patterson and I tell you what he just feeds this in in behind the Sheffield United defenders to say to Dan Juma just tap this one home and that's all he had to do there was no way he was going to miss that sat up beautifully side foot back of the net 2-2 2-2 and it was a very very good goal from Dan Juma who was denied a penalty just moments ago and now has got on the score sheet goal at St Andrews Dave Rowe equaliser here as well Birmingham 1 Millwall 1 Jay Stanfield scoring in successive league games really neat finish inside the penalty area ball flicked through by Bakuna Stanfield on the right foot beyond Sarkic all square Birmingham 1 Millwall 1 2-2 two -two in the game at Bramall Lane the basement battle between pointless Everton and pointless Sheffield United but it looks at the moment that both of them are going to get a point but there might be more twists in the tail here at Bramall Lane as the ball's picked up by Anana down the left side Ashley Young takes it on left footed delivers the ball towards the far post it's headed away but only as far as Dekure who's on the edge of the area a right footed shot is weak and it bobbles along the floor and into the arms of the goalkeeper Wes Fotheringham well just what Everton needed they've started the second half with a real intensity and that's what you've got to do I mean we talked about it at half time Sam in terms of both of these sides pretty slow in the build up not a lot of intensity to their play and that's going to struggle in the Premier League better so far in the second half though from Everton ball is set in the centre circle and it's played forward by Anana good feet by Beto again held on to it really well I was speaking to an Italian journalist Daniele Fisichella about him and his qualities earlier in the week and he was saying that he has got something he's he's done a really good job he was on into Milan's list this summer for a, a, uh, a transfer down the left it goes by Young into Decore it comes back off the defender and off Decore and goes behind the way to our left he's good in transition he's got great acceleration he's good over the park his technical ability is is not perfect but it it can get better he's still a young man he's been criticized for not being as decisive and purposeful in the box up until this point but he has got 10 goals in each of the last three seasons which suggests he's got something and for 25 million pounds at this moment in time it looks like a good acquisition and for the way that Everton want to play they need that all action centre forward Calvert-Lewin when he is fit does that very well he gives you that that physicality that energy that willingness to chase things and unsettle defenders is important and so far in this game his hold-up play has been magnificent McBurney is fouled by Gay on this near side and it's going to be a free kick just short of the uh, centre circle 13 minutes gone in the second half it's 2-2 at Bramall Lane and these two teams who were struggling for goals actually well certainly Everton were prior to the start of the match has scored to each here is Baldock down the right side taking on Young a low cross into the box oh it's cleared only as far as Harmer and then LaRucci over the bar from a tight angle it came at him very quickly it sort of bounced off Harmer into the path of LaRucci after the initial cross was half cleared by Everton and from a 45 degree angle he just sort of whacked at it but he got too much air on it and it elevated straight over the top of the crossbar but it was a chance it certainly was really good run arcing run from Baldock in behind Ashley Young on the right hand side took it down brilliant cross into the box nobody there poor clearance eventually fell to LaRouche and you're right talk about snatched at it just needed to try and guide it Patterson in the right fullback position plays it upfield towards Dekure and then on to uh, 
Tarkovsky and then good feet by Garner to weave between two players and pass the ball into Decore's pass path and then they start to attack down the left flank Everton with Ashley Young and then on to Dan Juma who scurries forward takes on the defender Baldock goes on the outside gets to the byline low cross into the near post poked away by Egan in front of his own goalkeeper and then it comes out to the right Nolly Norwood will kick it long Branthwaite's got hold of Archer they're tussling as they go for the ball the referee allows play on Archer draws the referee's attention to it and it goes out at play on this near side underway for a throw and Tarkovsky's got a bit of a problem here yeah, he just took a, a clash of heads with McBurney as he cleared that. It was, again, good options when the ball was played forward for Sheffield United. Archer came short. McBurney went long. That's what you've got to do as a, as a pairing. Throw it to Sheffield United on this right-hand side. Sheffield United, who have been averaging seven shots per game so far in the Premier League haven't had too many in this game either six so far four on target Everton have had 14 and that means over the course of the season so far Everton have had 57 shots on goal and they've scored two goals uh, but they've been <laughs> both here today and they've given away a corner over on the far side and Gustavo Harmer is receiving a warm applause in the corner in front of the cop that huge cop that goes raking back and he's prodded up, helped up by, uh, propped up by three stanchions the ball delivered into the box from Harmer and it's caught by Pickford it was a, not a great delivery Pickford wanted to get a quick release on that didn't and in the end has now smashed it forward and Beto is chasing and Fodderings had to come out to the perimeter of his box to collect it ahead of the Portuguese and it's uh, back with Sheffield United again. 2-2 and finally poised. Yes. Yep. Who is going to try and take those risks that are required in a game now? Both teams settled after that Everton goal. And maybe we'll see some tension now as we get towards the end of the game with it poised in this way. Let's hope not. You're listening to Sheffield United 2, Everton 2 on TalkSport with Super 6. Simply download the app, Super 6, get your entries in before 3pm today and you could become a winner without spending a penny. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. Dan Juma forward to uh, Anana who just gets in front of Larucci enough on the ball to feed Beto. Read that brilliantly. There was space on the far side for Ghana. The move breaks down Andy Madley who did play the advantage initially, did well to hold it off and then decided to blow his whistle in order to give Everton the free kick when the move didn't materialise. No, it's good referee. It was obvious that LaRucci didn't quite get the ball with that challenge. Everton definitely been the better side in the second half. Absolutely, 2-2, 61 on the clock. And maybe Everton could take this on and get a victory. In difficult circumstances... Here is Young, floating it forward towards Branthwaite, who heads the ball back across the face of goal. Into the air it goes, but Decoure is guilty of a push. And that's going to be a free kick. I mean, you look at the, the two benches, it's not filled with quality, game-changing quality. I mean, you look at the Everton batch, it's, it's barely filled, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've got two goalkeepers on them. One of them's as old. Is that one of them is actually older than you? He, one of the goalkeepers. He actually is. He actually is. Um, and uh, the other five players, the outfield players, two of them are coming back from injury and probably aren't fully fit. And the three others, Ben Godfrey, Chamiti, and Unyango, all young players. You just wonder whether Sean Dyche, if needs be, could bring on. Chumiti and play him alongside Beto and he had a start didn't he in the game against uh, Doncaster in the week and then was replaced by Beto uh, here is uh, Gay just in front of the halfway line plays it left to Young Young tries to clip it down the left channel for Beto to chase and Fodderingham came right out towards the edge of his own penalty area and he grabbed the ball. Was he inside the box? Andy Madley says he was. The Everton fans weren't so sure. Andy Madley said he was right 
in line with it big thumbs up to Fodderingham the referee was in the perfect position he was in the perfect position uh, but he uh, was under scrutiny and he's under scrutiny again after a challenge by Garner on LaRucci he's given a free kick over on the far side and quite rightly so uh, was Fodderingham inside or outside he was inside just about just manoeuvred his body just the referee just to got... see that angle even though Fodderingham basically turned his back to play so no one could see it <laughs> yeah that was tricky he sort of John Egan actually came across and sort of closed the line of sight <laughs> of the ball and then Fodderingham turned his back on yeah. the referee so there was no way of definitively saying whether it was in or out uh, but it's uh, play on and a free kick over on the far side for Sheffield United taken by Norwood delivered into the box at the far edge he's headed down by Agma Hodzic there was a pullback on Young and it's going to be an offside flag well there was accusations there of a handball inside the box as it came down into the penalty area but there was already a pullback from one of the players going into the box it was John Egan who tugged back Ashley Young and yeah, that wasn't going anywhere I'm afraid the subsequent appeal for a handball against Branthwaite 2-2, 65 on the clock. We're off round our grounds very shortly indeed to give you an update on all the uh, team news ahead of the three o'clock kickoffs, which we'll keep you updated with on Talk Sport. The best place to be on a Saturday afternoon is to have Adrian Durham in your ears, giving you updates of goals as they go in. There is a head collision over on the far side, which LaRucci is needing treatment for. Ashley Young has come out towards the near side to have a word with members of the coaching staff Steve Stone and Ian Wohn having quite an intense discussion with Sean Dyche here I think they know that they're on top Dean and it's about now pushing the button and making sure that they get over the line and maybe get another goal to earn them all three points yeah I mean he'll be really pleased I think Sean Dyche with the whole overall performance so far from his, his Everton team they've looked really dangerous which is something that they've clearly got to address and actually in the second half we've seen very little from Sheffield United in an attacking sense which I think you've got to give credit to Everton and the two centre-backs for getting a grip of the two centre-forwards and, and Adrissa Garner Gay has latched himself on to Harmer whenever Sheffield United have got the ball and he was the one causing some problems in the first half well this delay is quite significant and LaRucci does look to uh, have suffered a suspected head injury he is very gingerly getting back to his feet and they may well have to make a change here Chris Basham is stripped and ready for action also waiting to come on is Luke Thomas who they signed from uh, Leicester City late on in the window and the Rucci going off on the far side means that Thomas will indeed come on And uh, the other change is Basham for Egan. Change at the heart of the defence as well. Well, interesting though. Will that be a? That'll probably be a change of shape, won't it, for Sheffield United from a back three to a back four. An extra midfielder, I would expect, in Basham, unless Basham obviously is going to go into that back line well, he or, he, or he could be a centre for or a goal he just basically does everything yeah he, he usually plays at the heart of the defence and then this is allowed to go and do what he wants so he's stationed at <laughs> yeah. the back in yeah. between the other two centre halves and then he just goes up and does whatever he wants to do so sometimes he'll pop up on the right hand side sometimes he'll pop out on uh, the left sometimes he'll be a striker uh, he's just attempted to clear a ball and it's ricocheted back towards the left hand side and Dan Juma, who's picked it up for Everton inside the Sheffield United penalty area. It's crossed by Decore and caught by Fodderingham. Uh, Ag Mahodzic and Basham having a discussion. He is going to be one of the three centre-halves initially, with uh, Ag Mahodzic playing in the centre. Is, uh, is he not one of the original overlapping centre-backs? He is, one. Basham. Well, yeah, they, that's their system. They designed it, didn't they? Absolutely. Chris Wilder. Um, and he was definitely the one, wasn't he? He was the one, the rampaging right-sided defender who would get up and help out the attack for Sheffield United in the season they got promoted under Chris Wilder and uh, beyond. 
and uh, he's back in the team now he's actually been with the club for 10 seasons now only Ollie Norwood has played more Premier League games for the Blades than Chris Basham started that Lincoln game in midweek which uh, Dean, has, Dean, Dean has asked for a DVD off I think <laughs> maybe not ball on the halfway line down in front of us and it's uh, with Norwood who swings it out towards the right hand side uh, we'll go off to the Etihad in just a second but the ball has been bent round the corner for Norwood to trace Branthwaite has got there ahead of uh, McBurney and then uh, the ball's played off um, Ashley Young and it's out for a throw in deep inside Everton territory and uh, an opportunity to get on the front foot for Sheffield United. They play the ball in from Baldock into the right wing position. He squeezes between two players, moves to the edge of the box, then tries to take on a third. Garner Gay stood his ground. Baldock threw himself at him. No penalty. So we'll go off to the game at the Etihad Stadium. One of the big stories of the day yesterday was João Polinia staying at Fulham. Is he involved at all, John Dunn? He's not, he's not in the 11, he's not in the travelling party after that move to Munich broke down yesterday. He's one of three changes from the draw at Arsenal last week. Lukic and Bassi also out. Ream, Craney and Reid are incoming. City make three changes to the side that beat Sheffield United last Sunday. A debut for Jeremy Docco. Foden and Akanji start as well. They replace Guardiol, Bernardo Silva and Jack Grealish. Thanks very much. Here is Baldock at 2-2 at Sheffield United. Sending the ball in towards the far post and coming in the far post. It's hit away and saved by Jordan Pickford and out to the edge of the penalty area. And Harmer, whose strike goes beyond. And Luke Thomas was denied a debut goal just seconds after coming on. The ball's just popped up and hit James Garner's hand. And the referee is being asked to look at it from a VAR perspective. His arm was out by his side. Was it enough to give a penalty? Well, he just tried to nip it past Garner. It just hits him in the stomach. But, of course, stomach. when you've got the whole cop behind that goal, shouting handball, you think it might be. I don't, I don't really understand why everyone got so elevated there for a <laughs> second. Because it really did hit his midriff. But there was a great chance for Luke Thomas. A great opportunity that Jordan Pickford had to save as it sort of snuck through to the far post. I mean, it looked an impossible angle to squeeze it in, but Pickford did well to follow it as... Luke Thomas went round the back and tried to tuck it in. Yeah, he got a good connection on it, Luke Thomas, to try to find that far corner. Jordan Pickford very, very good with his footwork there from the front post to the back. Decore at the other end, back heel into uh, Anana. Anana back to Decore inside the penalty area. Across comes Bash and puts it out. Offside flag was up anyway, so we'll go off to Turf Moor. Burnley have had a few early season injuries. Spurs have struggled with one or two as well. Who's in? And who's out? Steve Hoppersall. Well, Vincent Cumney looks like he's tinkered with his formation. Jordan Bayer's back earlier than expected, probably slotting into a back four. Good Munson also starts on the left wing. Uh, for Spurs, Richarlison doesn't start. He's replaced by Manor Solomon in the only change from the win at Bournemouth, presumably Son through the middle. Burnley versus Tottenham at Turf Moor. OK, Neil Mope returned to the GTEC late last night, but not eligible today for the arrival of Bournemouth. Who does start? Alfie Reynolds. Well, both sides rotated heavily midweek in the cup. Up, so it's one change for Brentford and two for Bournemouth since their last Premier League games. Me comes in for Collins for Brentford. Rothwell and Kelly are replaced by Cook and Senesi for Bournemouth. Kelly, after being linked with a deadline day move to Tottenham, isn't in the match day squad. It's Brentford hosting Bournemouth. Live on TalkSport 2 from 3 o'clock this afternoon, the battle of the big spenders at Stamford Bridge. For us, Ian Danter. And not many of those who've had the big money spent on them feature this afternoon. Chelsea unchanged from the 3-0 Premier League win over Luton. Cole Palmer is amongst the substitutes. Only one of Forrest's many signings yesterday is even eligible today. That's Nuno Tavares. He's on the bench after the departure of Brennan Johnson. Oro Mangala is brought in for Forrest's only change from their narrow defeat at Manchester United. Chelsea against Forrest live at three on TalkSport 2. Abdoulaye Decore has just committed a foul on this near side which is going to generate him a yellow card. The ball went down the right after... Young was dispossessed, Baldock squeezed the ball in, played it to McBurney, there was a late challenge by the Corre initially and then he had a second bite at him, pushed him to the floor, free kick Sheffield United, Dean Ashton. That was brilliant bit of play, 25 tackles, not one of them was won and the referee just <laughs> let the play go until the final push from Decore. he's a bit unlucky to get 
a yellow card unless that is a I think a it was the first lock. one I think it was the first the first one was really late on the near side ah ok Bulldog then went on to the next one was a bit of a shove wasn't it so I think it was probably for that one rather than the second one because as you say it would have been harsh for that uh, the free kick has been given which uh, Harmer will take this is about eight yards back from the right angle of the penalty area on this near side Dwight McNeil is about to come on for Everton and this cross coming in from Harmer from this right side McBurney will try and attack it and uh, it's swung in towards the near post but Bernie's going towards it but so is Branthwaite and it's a good header away uh, ahead of Basham who was coming in around the back to cause problems Paul Hackingbottom tries to keep Sheffield United on the front foot and uh, they want to make a change here Everton and Dwight McNeil is replacing not Anana who's desperate to come over and get some sort of energy gel but James Garner who is coming off on this near side what uh, difference will that make he's a little more progressive a little bit more uh, tricky going forward is he yeah I mean he, he travels with the ball well doesn't he so I think if they are under some pressure now towards the end of the game if they can get that ball out towards Dwight McNeil he can carry that ball up the pitch and get Everton a bit of relief Dwight McNeil who uh, has been suffering with a little bit of an ankle injury up until this point goes out towards that far side Cameron Archer is coming off he's going to be replaced for the final uh, what 20 minutes of this game by uh, another of uh, the new uh, first team acquisitions he's saying five years ago William Asula who's coming off uh, the bench in fact it's not is it Benny Traore who's coming on it yeah. is Benny Traore he's uh, just signed from Hacken he's about to come on and he goes up front he is uh, another speedster isn't he Benny Traore he's got a huge amount of speed wearing number 11 yeah I was impressed with him on the break against Manchester City the odd break that they had he was involved in it just surprised you'd take Archer off though if you wanted a chance to fall you want it to fall to him there's only 15 minutes to go maybe he feels as if his race has been run Asula small and diminutive goes into the attack the right sided free kick is headed away by Branthwaite comes back out as far as Robinson who volleys the ball at the second attempt after bringing it down well over the top of the crossbar he's just not going to score from there he just didn't look like he was going to score just help that back in to the area to cause some more problems you're not going to flick that up to yourself and then side volley it into that far corner we are witnessing witnessing a little bit of history here today this is only the fifth occasion of two sides facing each other on zero points in a Premier League match having both played at least three games the others Southampton against Swindon in August 1993 pause for the game Bolton in September 2009 and Sheffield United against Fulham in October 2020 and Arsenal against Norwich in September 2021 Arguably, that was a real crucial was, game for yeah, Mikel Arteta, a building block for the future, yeah. wasn't it? Do you remember that scuffed goal, 1 0 win, I think it was? Yeah. And the rest, as they say, is history. That was the Mark Robbins moment, wasn't it, for Arteta? <laughs> <laughs> Here is Anana down the left side, moving into an advanced position, attacking the Sheffield United goal. He finds Young for Everton, who crosses the ball into the box. It's whipped into the air by Vinny D'Souza on the stretch. And the ball drops about 10 yards shy of the edge of the penalty area. Young tries to head it into the path of Dan Juma. Didn't get away with it the first time, but does the second. Comes back to Dan Juma, who's faced up by Basham, and then tricks him, goes on the outside, produces across into the centre, misses everybody. And then it's come back out towards the near side, the left, a bit of Everton pressure. Anana with a delivery towards the far post. But McNeil is blocked off, it's too high for Beto. And it floats behind into the Bramall Lane end, away to our left-hand side and out for a goal kick. Has Beto faded a little bit in the second half? I mean, he's put in so much work, hasn't he? I think Everton have started to creep a little deeper. Decore's not getting up to support him. And so he's not then got the runners to take away one of the centre-backs. I'd say Dan Juma's been another positive, hasn't he, for Everton? I know he didn't make the most of the opportunities, but he's look very lively he's got the beating of the defenders yeah he's got a goal but he could have probably have had one or two more yeah uh, he caused the havoc with the run in behind which could have led to a penalty so he's definitely been an asset today as Dan Juma but it's 2-2 
the first time since February 2021 that uh, Sheffield United have scored more than one goal in a top flight match and the ball's been spun into Anana. that's a poor challenge by Basham from behind it's going to generate a free kick five yards short of the D got to know that he just can't win it from there because the only way he is going to win it is to crash through the back of Anana's calf and free kicks are given regularly for that now even if you do get some of the ball and Ashley Young straight away after Dan Juma had the previous free kick sprinted over to grab the ball to say I'm going to have this although Dwight McNeil quite fancies it too very central and Ashley Young is standing over it McNeil standing over it too Dan Juma a couple of yards back Beto right on the edge of the wall on the far side. There is a four-man central wall just inside the 18-yard box. Young hits it first time over the wall and straight down the throat of Fotheringham. No messing around there, just a straight shot on goal, but it was nothing more than that. No, didn't have the pace, did it, from Ashley Young. It was from quite a way out. You've got to have the dip and the pace there to beat a goalkeeper in the Premier League from there. Robinson long raking pass forward to McBurney who heads it on but it wasn't the most direct of headers it went wide to the right and it was difficult for uh, Benny Traore to get on the end of that Benny Traore they signed from Hacken in the summer for four million quid he'd missed a penalty in that Lincoln game trying to make amends for that tonight Gay strides forward being trapped by Traore oh, nudges it forward and gives it straight to Chris Basham Norwood Guarding it back to his goalkeeper. Are we going to get a winner here live on TalkSport with just 10 minutes plus stoppage time remaining in our first Premier League game of Saturday? Our second comes from Stamford Bridge on TalkSport 2. Palmer's over hit what was an opportunity to play in Traore down that rest right-hand side. But Bernie wins the high ball, heads it down to Harmer, and then Traore spanning behind, but it was too hefty from Harmer and cut out by Everton. It's that long ball football following him in towards McBurney flick inside to Harmer who probably should have taken it on himself there rather than trying to play that pass first time to Benny Traore here's a question for you do you think because of the fact that we've spent the last 10-15 years doing our best to eradicate long ball football the defences find it more difficult now to defend against it and actually when you play a ball like that and the big man gets a flick on down to someone who's about 30 yards from goal they're a little bit stretched the defences so there are opportunities to play from there because they're not used to doing it it's almost like they've it's been lost yeah. isn't it Traore down the right trying to take on Branthwaite that's a battle that he isn't going to win and Branthwaite comes away with the ball oh that's just really bad challenge from uh, Baldock who's gone across the body of Ashley Young and that's going to be a free kick for Ashley Young who's gone down and he's hurt himself there I think yeah, he just crashed into the body of Baldock, didn't he, as he flicked that round the outside of him. He knows what he's doing, Baldock, there. He's trying to stop the counter-attack. He just went up and over the shoulder of Baldock and landed terribly there, Ashley Young, but he's a robust individual. How often do we see this, Sam, where as we get towards the end of a game, it's almost like the players are regenerating the batteries, ready for like a... A late surge. A late, a late surge towards the end of the game where they maybe take some more risks. And there's, there's part of that. And then there might be a little bit of caginess that is creeping into both mentalities, which is we don't want to lose again. Yeah. Here is Ashley Young. Forward to Dan Juma. He's inside the Sheffield United half, but he's coming back from an offside position. So he's going to be uh, penalised for that. And Dan Juma and Young are rowing audibly nothing nothing is happening quick so it's not like no, it's all quick, very quick, you know quick throw-ins quick free kicks neither team are, are looking to do that which surprises me a bit for Sheffield United at home yep 32,000 in here today trying to roar them on but ultimately at this moment in time they're going to come away with just one point and one point from four games here is Young into McNeil trying to get away from Luke Thomas who does brilliantly to intercede and bring the ball out towards this right hand side Baldock plays it against Ashley Young who defends it well he's still hobbling Ashley Young the 38 year old where's the respect for your elders nowadays I don't know <laughs> 
George Bulldog has done some damage to him, I think. They might have to make a change here. And Steve Stone just looking at his uh, charge to see whether or not he needs to come off. Ashley Young, he still looks a little bit sheepish. The ball is cleared by Everton from inside their own half. Beto trying to cause problems for Robinson. And it's McNeil who does cause a problem for Robinson. Gets to the edge of the area, needs a bit of support. Wasn't anybody as an out there. Feathers the ball into the box. A delicate pass, actually, which almost came through to Beto. And it's cleared away. Vinny D'Souza tidies up. It's won by Anana after a hesitation from Thomas. Thomas manages to clear and sends it out over on the far side. And it goes out for a throw-in. Too many touches there from Dwight McNeil. He got into a good position, won the ball back. And then he took seven touches before making a decision when one actually would have done into the path of Beto. And it's an unbeaten in their last four trips to... Bramall Lane but their away form in the Premier League has been dispiriting for some while they've won just three of their last 37 trips away from home and if you uh, want an indication as to why you struggle that will certainly be one of them it's a team that has lacked goals lacked output over the course of the last few years now, have they been given a little bit of hope with the two goals that they've scored today can they fashion a winner against Sheffield United Young into Anana. Anana out on this near side. Midway inside Blades territory. Back into Anana again. It's collected by Adrissa Gay. Then back to Young. And then on halfway, Branthwaite. They switched the play to the right side. And then Patterson didn't take it in with any real poise. And it sort of bounced back into the path of Tarkovsky. Sheffield United 2, Everton 2. On talks for and remember later on we've got the live fight Liam Smith against Chris Eubank Jr as the ball's bobbled back towards Fodderingham that was blooming casual from Fodderingham but very cute as well and he sent the ball out on this near side and Sheffield United play out from the back a few fans said the other word I think as he just tried to clip it over <laughs> Beto that's risky to say the least just a little bit uh, they got away with it Ball is on halfway, 2-2 the score, talk sport, flick on by Anana, into Decore, tries to reverse the ball into Danjuma, but Agma Hozic is there to get it away, and it's out and over the halfway line. Here is Tarkovsky, seeing it back towards his goalkeeper, and Pickford plays it out wide towards the left. Young, now back in field to Branthwaite, and then all the way back to the goalkeeper Pickford who's going to kick long down the right side and he's going to find Patterson here Patterson into the centre a little bit wide right of it is McNeil who travels to the touchline and is dispossessed by Harmer and it goes out for a throw in to Everton who are just starting to probe a little bit more as we reach the final few moments of the game well the players look they will be tiring it's still early on in the season Beto has been sent down the right by Everton across comes the defender and it's a good challenge by Akman Hozic to get it away from Beto and stop Everton from fashioning an attack but now at the other end maybe a chance to break for Sheffield United Tarkovsky steps across and stops it from reaching Benny Traore and it's still Sheffield United 2 Everton 2 on TalkSport with now and don't forget with now you can stream all the live Sky Sports action like Brighton versus Newcastle live today 11.99 no contract search now sports what a game that's going to be by the way and just I think with that tiredness the quality's just dipped a fraction Ball into McBurney, McBurney and Branthwaite collide, but the offside flag is up against McBurney anyway. And that's going to be a free kick to Everton inside their own half of the field. How will Sean Dyche feel about taking a point here? Will he see that as a positive, bearing in mind they've come from behind after taking the lead, or will he see it as a negative that they drop points from a winning position? No, I think he'll take it as a positive. I think any away game in the Premier League, if you can come away with something you have to be pleased and to get that first point on the board I think is important mentally for the players if you're Sheffield United you've played Nottingham Forest you've played Crystal Palace you've played Everton and you've got one point how are you feeling? pretty dejected to be honest especially your home fixtures you want to be winning it's Nottingham Forest show didn't they how important that home form can be to stay in this division 
McNeil on the far side for Everton. 88 minutes on the clock. McNeil holding on, carrying the ball through the middle of the opposition half. He was tracked by Thomas. That's applauded by the home fans. Young up to Decore, turning the ball back towards Dan Juma. He tried to play a more difficult pass than was actually necessary there. Decore lost the ball, and then Everton have given away a free kick, and Sheffield United have got it back again. Is there going to be a winner in this encounter? 2 2 between Sean Dyche and Paul. Heckingbottom still bellowing on the touchline. Scoring two goals will be a positive for Everton, that's for sure. Here is Ashley Young up to Gay, into Decore. He was a little bit concerned about the touch from behind and gave the ball away. And Harmer now sprinting forward, carrying the ball into Everton territory. Plays it to the left. Robinson joins the attack. McBurney's in the middle. Traore's got it. Tries to reverse it through the six yard box. It wasn't a great delivery, but he's got hold of it again, Benny Traore. Now he's found McBurney, comes to the edge of the box, D'Souza inside the area, plays it towards the right, then hits it against the defender, didn't really know what to do with it there, D'Souza. Comes back out to Baldock, in towards McBurney. Two players get in each other's way, the ball is smacked against the head of Tarkovsky, and the referee calls for someone to come on and give him attention. Well, Vinny D'Souza, it was like he'd never been in a penalty area in an attacking sense in his whole entire life he had no idea what to do he just stood there and didn't manoeuvre the ball didn't look to pass just froze and eventually when it then came back out recycled crossed into the box bravery from Tarkovsky flying in head first but he's going to have to go off yeah, he's going to have to go off and go off for 30 seconds as Sheffield United deal with deliver a, bo a ball into the box from a long throw from the far side so Everton have got to deal with an aerial ball into the box without James Tarkovsky in there and it's going to be 30 seconds off the pitch having received treatment on it throw in from the far side uh, I think they're going to make are they going to make a substitution I suppose if they made a substitution that player could come on straight away six minutes of added time at the end of the 90 uh, Tarkovsky's come onto the field of play and gone down on the far side because tactically they want to make sure they've got the requisite number of bodies on the pitch to deal with this long throw and it was the physio over on the far side that instigated that well the physio as quickly as possible did that universal sign to make a substitution and they can of course use that as a because of the, the head injury and that has to be then used before play can restart. Yeah, so off comes uh, Tarkovsky, on comes Godfrey. And it is a bit of a tactical use of that rule. They're bending the rules a little bit to ensure that they've got the right number of players inside the penalty area. Paul Heckingbottom just has a word with the fourth official as the throw-in prepares to come in over on the far side it'll be delivered by Robinson angled towards the box oh it wasn't a great delivery it's up into the air but Bernie flicks it on it comes out to Norwood but Young gets there first it breaks to Harmer who's first to it showing a bit of energy to scurry out to this near side and keep it in by the touchline travels to the edge of the box he's, he's almost playing pinball wizard as he tries to charge through to the edge of the penalty area and he can't go any further and it's cleared away by Everton that's a flick on by Basham that almost came through to Traore who looks a little bit raw hasn't been able to get it under control and it's given away and Everton look to go up the other end 91 minutes and 40 seconds have been played at Bramall Lane we've got six added minutes it's Sheffield United 2 Everton 2 with Sam Matterface and Dean Ashton live at Bramall Lane this afternoon in South Yorkshire we've got full commentary of Chelsea Nottingham Forest to come and that's on TalkSport 2 prior to Liam Smith against Chris Eubank Jr. tonight and remember when you wake up on Monday morning you will pour over it all with Andy Townsend and Ali McCoy as they look back on the weekend on TalkSport Breakfast and it was fun actually doing half an hour of TalkSport Breakfast with Alan yesterday morning he was in uh, good form and he'll be back Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Ball is out of play on the far side and Sheffield United have won another opportunity to deliver a long throw towards the edge of the box. Robinson midway inside Everton territory is going to take it. They've sent Akma Hodzic up into the penalty area 
Uh, McBurney is in there and so is Traore but there's not too many bodies to aim at as Everson pull everyone back it's aimed in towards McBurney and Agma Hudzic gets something on it but there was no one to pick up the pieces and the loop ball runs loose inside the penalty area and Baldock picks it up I'm, I can't really understand that you've got a brilliant long throw from Robinson right in towards the penalty spot you've got two players going to attack it they win it, nod it down not another single Sheffield United player in the area that just that just can't happen no, and when Bordock got there eventually Pickford was already on it and he was coming from so deep that uh, the initial flick on from Ahmed Hosic didn't have its effect and it would have done had someone have been coming through from the edge of the penalty area it was a little bit negligent an opportunity was crafted Sunderland are 5-0 up against Southampton now unbelievable last minute stoppage time in that game which is live on Talk Sport 2 uh, the ball is deep inside opposition territory elsewhere already today there have been games up and down the country in the uh, Football League I'll go through the scores in just a second. Bristol City leading 2-1 against Swansea. Birmingham against Millwall is 1-1 in the Championship. Decore has it just left of the centre circle. Played out towards the left now and Adrissa Garner Gay. One more chance possibly for Everton. They've got two minutes to try and craft one. Here is Patterson, further wide to the right. Three yards in from the touchline. The ball played into Decore. Decore was being chased by McBurney. He didn't see what was coming in his wing mirrors there and had to go backwards rather than forwards and that was good defending from Sheffield United who have kept their shape well. Back to Young. Halfway line is Branthwaite. Forward into the path of Gay. Tries to just chuck it down the left cha channel for Beto who's uh, a little bit slow off the mark now having worked his socks off after a really good Premier League debut. Yeah, he's cleared by Angel Hodzic and there's a foul on McBurney which generates one free kick six yards inside Everton territory and everybody just went forward, forward, forward get Sheffield United players forward I think Sean Dyche maybe should have taken Beto off earlier he's completely done in and the effort that he's put in this game but could this delivery be right from Gustavo Harmer into that area and make sure you cover the penalty area this time Harmer with the delivery into the box looking to try and find McBurney but it's Robinson who heads it across the face of goal but it's too loopy and grabbed by Jordan Pickford and there is space on the far side the right and Patterson has picked the ball up halfway Sheffield United trying to get back into a little bit of shape but the ball from Patterson into McNeil just sort of meant that when he stabbed it back it was aerial and it goes out for a throw and over on the far side they move it quickly Everton in the final few seconds of the match 30 seconds of added time still to play McNeil cuts in left footed drives the ball forward it's blocked by Harmer once again in fact it was Baldock actually who got in front of that to stop it from going any further and it breaks to halfway it comes to Godfrey who spreads it to the right Everton trying to fashion one last opportunity after Sheffield United lost the ball once more but Godfrey's ball forward is poor and now we've played our six minutes of added time is that enough? I think they're all done in the players they're really struggling both sets of players to actually muster a, an opportunity well this will be the first Premier League draw for Sheffield United since a 1-1 with Brighton in December 2020 they usually win or lose here is uh, D'Souza oh he's forgotten the ball and he's given it straight to Decore and Dan Juma has found McNeil who's running away from Harmer who pushes him in the back the referee says play on it's turned over and it's forward by Harmer looking to bend it round the back of the defence and Branthwaite miscues it it comes into the arms of Pickford and surely now the referee has just got to allow everybody to take a rest because they are all cream cracker there's some spaghetti legs out there now <laughs> as the ball is cleared upfield by Pickford up towards Beto who's trying to hold off Akma Hodzic he wrestles him but Beto still comes away with the ball he's done brilliantly Decore runs forward 97 minutes have been played McNeil with a foul it was so telegraphed and so obvious and he's given it away in a position where Everton had the ascendancy it was so unnecessary and surely that is the end of the game now a game which has uh, been pretty lively two teams desperate for something are going to get a point on the board we expect this to be it surely now six were allocated seven and a half have been given the ball sent forward by Fodderingham 
McBurney on, taken down by Traore. Back to McBurney, no rush to get the ball into the box. Baldock takes it, right side. Can he go through past Young? No, he can't. He goes out for a corner. Well, this might be it. 97 minutes, 53 seconds, and Sheffield United have a corner. And it will be taken by Oli Norwood. Remember how many goals they scored in the Championship last season from this sort of situation. Norwood to take it, right-footed, in towards McBurney, it's off the crossbar, it's stabbed towards goal, kept out by Pickford, who's made two fantastic saves. He tipped the first one onto the bar from McBurney and smothered the second, and he's kept Everton in the match. That's absolutely outrageous from Pickford, honestly. Unbelievable from the England goalkeeper, what a header from McBurney. Pickford flies to his right-hand side, clips it onto the bar, and he makes another save off his head and off the post. This is how good that save was. When they showed it on the screen, the Sheffield United fans applauded him. Absolutely terrific double save from Jordan Pickford, who embraces Ollie McBurney, knowing that he has just saved Sean Dice's bacon and saved Everton's bacon in the process. A corner in the 99th minute of the game, headed down by McBurney, was headed for goal. He propped it up onto the crossbar, it came back out, they tried to smuggle it home, and he was there to stop them again, Dean Ashton. Honestly, the second save is outstanding too, because McBurney gets back up and then studs it towards goal, picks for them with his head and his hand, flicks it onto the post, and back into the grateful arms of Jordan Pickford. What an end to what's been a, a terrific game from these two teams. Well, Sheffield United and Everton finally have a point on the board. Two sides that started the day with nothing, now at least have something. But Everton have got their goalkeeper to thank for preserving that point. It's finished here at Bramall Lane. Sheffield United to Everton too. And even Paul Heckingbottom, the Sheffield United manager, has just gone over to Jordan Pickford and given him a bit of a wry smile and a congratulations. The thing is, even though when you're on the wrong end of that, you have to applaud greatness like that. Oh, you do. I mean, what a moment that was from Jordan Pickford. And that is that sort of encapsulates him as a goalkeeper. The shot-stopping ability that he has at times is, is wonderful. And... You know, McBurney there just thinks I'm scoring. Powerful header, downward, thinking that's going to hit the back of the net. And then the goalkeeper makes that save. And then to get up and make the second save as well onto the post. Just a, an incredible moment for Pickford and for his team to preserve that point. And do you know what? It was a brilliant game of football. I thoroughly enjoyed it. End to end stuff. But what did you make of both teams? We talked about this being a, a, a six-pointer, which is so early to say, and a little bit of a narrative. However, how are these two teams going to fare now? The transfer window is closed and we know what they've got. I think defensively they both look weak at the moment. Too many times it's too easy for the opposition to, to create chances against them. They look like they've got something going forward finally. Certainly Everton but they're going to struggle. If they play with the tempo that they played with today, it's very, very slow. They're build up both sides. Both build-ups are very slow and quite easy to get back into, into shape again. So I think if that starts to improve, then, again, home games are going to be, are going to be crucial for, for both of these sides because I think they're going to struggle away to get any points. They got a little bit frenetic at times, didn't it, as well? I think the, the credit to the players, because they were all out in terms of energy, they'd sapped everything, they'd put everything into it. I think credit to them for that because it could have been really cagey and it wasn't. Both sides gave it a real good go to win the game for the three points and probably the right result I would say at the end yeah point of peace seems very fair and the confidence that we talked about leading into this game and then again at, at half time a win obviously gives that but does a draw I mean at, at least they're both off and running albeit with just a point yeah I mean if you're Sheffield United you want to win this game at home there's no doubt about that I think Everton will feel um, certainly the better for the point away from home but both of these sides will be pleased with a point. I think they'll be pleased with the performance. I think it gives hope to their support that this season isn't just going to be a, a total disaster, but 
plenty of work still for these two sides if they don't want to be down there all year. Yeah, absolutely. Dean, it's been a pleasure as always. Safe journey home. Thank you. Sam Matterface, enjoy Liam Smith, Chris Eubank Jr. tonight. Uh, he's punching the air himself. He's on his way down uh, to the tunnel. He'll be at the Manchester Arena watching that fight. We have it live. Uh, build up on TalkSport 2 uh, from 7 p.m. tonight, live on TalkSport from 9 p.m. So join us for that. Uh, over on TalkSport 2, earlier on, Sunderland beat Southampton by five goals to nil in the EFL Championship. Birmingham Mill will finish one all, and Bristol City came from behind at Swansea to win by two goals to one, and in League 2, Wrexham were 1-0 winners away to Tranmere. Here at Bramwell Lane, it was an absolute cracker, and it finished Sheffield United 2, Everton 2, Jordan Pickwood Jordan Pickford even not having to pick uh, goals out of the back of the net because two incredible saves in the dying seconds of added time meant that both sides finished with their first point of the campaign to go into the international break with a little bit of confidence. More live and exclusive Premier League football coming up on TalkSport 2 right now with Chelsea against Nottingham Forest while here on TalkSport. Adrian Durham is at the Etihad for Game Day Live taking you around the grounds in the Premier League and EFL.